This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me, as always, is my co-host, Nick Mason. Yeah, that's right. I realise I didn't mute us during the uh, the song and the sting at the start. Well, it's a good thing we have no interaction. Here <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think we said anything. <laughs> right. So that's lucky, I guess. Very yeah. much so. <laughs> no, normally it's banter or plenty. We just haven't, we, we're riffing normally, we're just riffing. getting warmed up. No, we're mostly complaining. We're mostly complaining, yeah. yeah. About all our wonderful listeners. That's right. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, if you if you sign up to Big Sandwich, our WandaVision recaps are now going up there early, the audio version before the visual element goes up on YouTube. That's right. Uh, our latest recap will be up. What's well, recaps? It's Easter egg. It's reviews. It's it's keywords in the YouTube algorithm. So <laughs> it's it will exactly, exactly right. Yes. But uh, so that Brie Larson, Brie Larson question, question mark. mark. It does get a lot of play that, in that episode. So that's that's well and truly up by now. If you do want to check it out. To be clear, that's not a spoiler. No. Brie Larson gets a lot of play in us talking about it. Yes, that's right. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, so do not stress. Or maybe it is a spoiler. Oh. We, we'll never tell. We'll never tell. That's uh, right. So this week we've got the news of the week as always where we're, I've got some Resident Evil news. We've got some uh, some Dark Universe news. Yes. Uh, we've got, have you seen the trailer Cosmic Sin? Is with, that because, uh, is, yes, I have. Okay, is, good. Is that because, <laughs> I to ask do, we, do we have Dark Universe news because it was Groundhog Day recently and the, the Groundhog <laughs> was, saw its it? shadow so we get Dark Universe news? <laughs> that might be it. Uh, Fantastic Beast shut down a name for the Matrix. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of MCU stuff, including um, Thor starting a Wakanda series. And, of course, we've got Snyder Cut news. Before, we've got a couple of, couple of good old boys coming in to talk about some, um, some adaptations of books. Good or bad? The boys, uh, the, are they good or bad? The, no, no, they're, they're the boys coming in. Yeah. No, they're good. Unquestionably good boys. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so that's Andy and Al from Two in the Think Tank. They're coming by a bit later. To, we're going to talk about some stuff. When I, I thought about <laughs> it and then I was like, maybe we should have picked Dave Warnicky because he has the book cheat podcast. Nah. Yeah, fuck him. I mean, we've got time. <laughs> No, we don't, Mason. Nah. They're on the way. Then they're, they're they're knocking on the door. Well, Dave could also be on the way. He's not. A, no. Conceivably, he could also. The, you know, you're right. The way these modern times work. Tell you what, we'll get Dave Warnicky in, and we won't tell him you already did it to not hurt his feelings. Okay, what right. Do you think about that. Okay, Perfect. but any time he mentions a book, it's yeah. already been mentioned by Al or Andy. Will be like yawn. Yeah, no, thank yawn you. Yawn and boo. <laughs> but he won't know why. Uh, okay, so. Deadline are reporting that Resident Evil has a release date, the new movie of September 3rd. Okay. Spookiest day of the year, no mm, doubt. That's right. I, um, I think Because it's pre, pre-Halloween. That's right. It's, it's gearing pre-the up. pre-Halloween month. It's like you've only got 27 Halloween odd days mu- Halloween to get prepared Eve. for Halloween month Eve. And you've got yeah. to think of a good Twitter handle that you can change. That's exactly it to. right. You're going to go with Mr. Pumpkin Movies again this year? Well, the, uh, last I did that before Halloween. You did, that's true. And yeah. then I changed it back just prior to Halloween. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so... I mean, I, we haven't seen anything yet. Uh, mm. This could very well get pushed or go to streaming or whatever, but why not Resident Evil, Mason? Yeah, absolutely. Is that what you th- I reckon you should change your handle to James Hell Brooks. <laughs> you know, like the Treehouse of Horror. Like Treehouse of Horror, very yeah, good. Yeah. Should I? Yep. All right, I'll do it. Do it right should now. Should I do it now? Yeah, do it now. All right, I'll do it. Hang on. <laughs> it's so bloody funny. I don't have time. I'll do it. I will okay, do, do it after later. the show. Okay, right, right. Because right. then it's got to be dead air where Collings edits that out. Okay, but it okay, has how to be, do you do this? It has to be before the episode comes out so people don't know why. I agreed. Okay. No problem. Terrific. Remind me at the end of the show. Okay, I won't. Uh, do you want some Hollywood Reporter news? Yes. Did you care? Wait, are they reliable or not? They're, they're one of the ones that are. Okay, great. But yeah. Oh, speaking of, I wasn't going to bring this up. Let's do this now. Okay. Do you see that? The, a personal beef? Yeah. A why, personal... We, why we weren't speaking before the, before the episode started? <laughs> we just did it for the Patreon money at this point, aren't That's we? exactly yeah. right, yeah. But uh, so... no, normally we are, to, normally we would be talking and probably saying something that we couldn't, like we have to erase. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And th- what would happen, because you put you, you push two mute buttons. I do, yeah. So our microphones are muted, but I'd like we'd do the whole episode and I'd be off the whole time because I'd be like, what if it went through anyway? What if it's in the recording? And then <laughs> then what if Collings, he, he misses it and then yeah. edit. And then we've or he turns something. on us. Yeah. <laughs> He's got all the evidence. <laughs> Maybe that's what he's doing. Yeah, he's just yeah. gathering evidence. Yeah, yeah, and then I would probably text you the next day, being like, "Hey, did we? Can you check Is the? Cool? Can you check the episode? Was it cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah." So I decided stony silence. Very good. Yeah. So not a rift. No. Anyway, so Netflix though they were developing a bunch of Nintendo properties, including Zelda. And then it leaked. Oh, and Star Fox as and well. And Star Fox, which a stop motion thing maybe? With puppets or something. Yeah, with puppets or something, which they sometimes are. Yeah, or I whatever. guess that's true. With yeah. All they're modeled off. And then it leaked and they shut it down. 
They just yeah, went, no, you don't get this anymore. Because wow. people are rude and they tell things they yes. shouldn't. <laughs> How dare anyone be inadvertently hyped for these properties that Isn't they that love? That's fucking crazy. I don't trust Nintendo and I don't like them. <laughs> they do a lot of weird things. They got our video that time. If they you did get our Pokemon we, video. We rec- Though we... that might have been the Pokemon company and not Nintendo oh, specifically. Oh, okay, right, right, right. But yeah. But they are weird about, or they, you, you used to be able to, it's changed now, but if you played a Nintendo game, on YouTube, you would have to split the revenue with them. With Nintendo? Yes. With Shigeru Miyamoto. Himself, the man himself. Wow. That's right. You couldn't even... With Doug Bowser, the current <laughs> the CEO. Current C- Coincidence, probably, I think, the name. No, isn't it? The, there is a term for it, I think. Isn't there a term for people... Cognitive dissonance? No. <laughs> there's a term for if you have a jaw. Like, if you have a name... A jaw? If you have a job... No, if you have a name that is a, that sounds like a job... Yeah. Oftentimes, or, it's a, or it, it relates to a job, oftentimes you are drawn to that job. Mark Webb, Spider-Man. Like, there's a there's a lot of Dr. Bloods. I don't know if you've noticed that. Oh, really? But I've encountered a number of them in my life. I'm, I mean, I'm a vampire hunter, so that, <laughs> that would do explains it, it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Speaking of vampire hunters, I've got some news. But I just wanted to quickly say, the only thing I can think of in relation to Nintendo, like, just, just taking their bat and ball and going home... Uh-huh is when the script leaked for The Hateful Eight. Nominative determinism. I haven't even looked it up. There we go. I remembered it. Very good. Yeah. I like how you had to point out that you didn't look it up. I thought you wouldn't believe me. I don't care either way. I know you don't. <laughs> so, but uh, you remember when Hateful Eight script leaked mm-hmm. and then Tarantino like shut it down Yeah. and he wasn't going to make it. But also like I remember when it leaked. Um, but then he. that's because he figured out due to a clause in his contract, half the money went to Shigeru Miyamoto. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> No good. That guy's in everything. Because Kurt Russell's character was named Princess Peach. <laughs> I should watch that again. I went to actually watch the extended version over the over the holiday break. Uh-huh. You know, they broke it up into a series, and it yep. wasn't on Netflix anymore huh. or Australian Netflix. So I'm gonna have to get that at some point. But uh, yeah, but he, but that being said, he did end up making it, and I think they will end up doing something with these properties as soon as they stop having their little tantrum in the corner. They'll yeah, come back. I mean, who? I mean, I guess they have more options now. Maybe they're yeah. like, we're going to get. Maybe they want to reopen negotiations somehow. Yeah, like they're like, well, we could get a better deal, so mm, we're we're shutting it down. Maybe we'll go to Amazon Prime unless you know. Maybe, mm. but they are making a Mario movie at the moment through DreamWorks. I want to say, oh. or a different thing. Anyway, the Hollywood Reporter. I like you made a DreamWorks face when you were puzzled by that. That's my regular face. Oh. Uh, Chloe Zhao, the director behind uh, Nomadland and the upcoming The Eternals, which was supposed to come out last year, but it didn't. She is working on uh, Universal's Dracula, the next installment in the dark universe that's probably not connected. Yes. She's going to write, produce, and direct. What's his uh, deal this time? Uh, well, it says here, here we go. It says that uh, from the T- Hollywood Reporter, here's a, here's a little bit of spin that I know you'll appreciate. Uh, details are being kept. In the coffin. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Uh, but Sal's version is described as an original. Well, they, do, they did that with the mummy. I'm sure they did under wraps. Can they do it for all of them? That's true. Can they do it for the creature from the Black Lagoon? It's all swampy. Yeah. It's been kept in <laughs> Details swamp. are swampy. Yeah, very good. Details, Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Details are a big swampy man. Details are covered in mud currently. And <laughs> Details are you're walking and, and your feet are underwater and they're a bit squelchy. Yeah, and and I'm quite sure what you're standing there's on. There's a bit of a fog, like a light fog. More of a yeah. mist, I guess, if, you, if I had mm. to describe it. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but it's uh, so details are a bolt through your neck if you spill one word of this, you son of a bitch. <laughs> are we getting one of those at the moment? A Frankenstein, yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I'd rather a Frankenstein before another Dracula. No, you're gonna love this because it's original, futuristic, sci fi, western, and themes of being on the fringes of society, which makes me think Dracula 2000, a movie I haven't yeah, seen. That's right. But look, why not? I love these swings at the dark universe. Yeah, we uh-huh. we got one good one in the past. 15, 20 years. Sure. So let's just keep going. I love it. Mm-hmm. And why not? Yeah. Wait, what are you talking about? Um, Invisible Man. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, sure. And I guess a good one. some of the mummy sequels. Bef- okay. Okay, sure. I right. guess, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Apparently The Great Gatsby is out of copy right now. What are we going to so do with it? We're going to make our own Great Gatsby. Mm, Great Gatsby, we'll say. The Rad Gatsby. Yeah. Details. The are- Rad Gatsby. Details. We could get are, Hannah Gadsby. We could get. <laughs> we could. To be Jay Gadsby, who's who's rad. That's perfect. Have yeah. you seen it or read it? I've done neither. No, I've seen it and read it. We'll yeah. talk about it with Andrew okay. and Albert when okay. they come sure, in. Sure, we'll yeah. do. Yes, no doubt. So Dracula. I've seen both great Gadsbys. Yeah, the Redford one and yeah. The, yeah. Well, we'll talk about it. Okay. Um, what are you excited? Are you excited for Dracula two thousand? No. <laughs> How futuristic. I think it just means modern day. 
Okay. So there we go. So uh, we've got another thing we talk about. It's the Cosmic Sin trailer, which is the new... Br- the, which is I thought Bruce you didn't want to talk about Bruce Willis anymore. Well, I feel like this is worth mentioning, right? Because it this ties into everything else. This is the second movie he's done with Frank Grillo. And Frank Grillo last time said that movie was terrible. Like yeah. he said it in a Collider interview or and whatever. And he was like, yeah, bloody Bruce Willis was only in it for the paycheck and I was only in it for the paycheck and what a bunch of... Just a couple of dudes who are only in it for the paycheck. And yeah. I guess they're both back in it for the paycheck again. So. Yeah. Do you know Frank Grillo's like 56? He looks great. He's He's got an amazing rig. Yep. As in body. Correct, yes. Uh, and I just, that's a good. I think that's good for him. <laughs> sure. He looks dehydrated sometimes. He does. I think that's. But imagine looking like that at 56. Hmm. Can you? Exactly like Frank Grillo. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one man <laughs> who has uncanny. that experience. Yeah. Like, that could be the plot of a movie. Could Perhaps be. the movie Cosmic Sin, whatever it's about. My God, I've woken up in the future and I look exactly like Frank Grillo. <laughs> it's <laughs> popular. But how does Frank Grillo look now? Because it's the future. <laughs> the same somehow. The same somehow. So, okay, so this is a Bruce Willis Frank Grillo joint. It's also maybe like a Gears of War knockoff or something. Seems that way. Or They're, Halo. Well, it's fascinating. Because the to suit's me- Gears of War, but it's like aliens. Yeah, so it's fascinating know. to me. Like, it's a sci fi uh, and it's set in the year 25, 24 or something I like just that. Take a swing, good. Yeah. <laughs> Just be like, yeah, this is this will be twenty twenty. Yeah, that's right. So he's a former marine, or maybe space marine. Space marine. But if you, I don't know if you've seen the poster, and this was pointed out in the Weekly Planet uh, Reddit page. It's the poster from Die Hard Four. He's even got the same scars. Oh, they've just photoshopped. Yeah. So it's not it's not literally that, but it, it's the it's the Bruce Willis from that yes. era. Because, Which is a long time ago. Yeah, but now. it's also not that different. Like, yeah. it doesn't look that different. But once you shave your head, it's all pretty much. That's you look true, the yeah. same for a long yeah, time. Yeah. But he's also, uh, like, notorious. There's a not- story from Kevin Smith for Cop Out where he refused to pose for the poster. Ah, okay. So I wonder right. whether this is a thing he does now. It's like, well, if you don't get me on the day when I come in for my, my 13 minutes, you're going to have to work. use some headshots from moonlighting. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, so he's but what's fascinating to me about this particular trailer, they seem to have gotten him to do more than he normally does cuz he's in a power suit of some sort. Yeah, how they do that? He seems to be walking around. It's also it couldn't be a CGI power suit cuz this doesn't look like that kind of movie. Yeah. It's got it's got that lower budget feel. Mm. You know, I can't wait to watch Cosmic Sin trailer when nice. it comes out mm. uh, with Bruce Willis and Frank Grillo together again. That's right. Maybe we're going to get a, a Grillo Willis trilogy. A Grillo Willis? <laughs> well, we're going to get my children's book, The Grillo Willis, <laughs> which I hope will tide you over. So is it secretly about the environment or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, good. It's got a Look message. out, The Grillo Willis is behind you. <laughs> You know? It's got a moral. It's got yeah. a moral, this book, probably. They're like the new Abbott and Costello, these two. Oh, I love it. Except they don't make good movies. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe this one will be good. Uh, Deadline are reporting that Fantastic Beasts 3, it suffered a bit of a delay. I don't know if you heard this because a team member from Fantastic Beasts 3 has tested positive for COVID. Uh, Fantastic Beasts 3 pause production will be back up with accordance uh, to safety guidelines. So this obviously isn't a surprise. happened to the Batman. It nearly happened to Mission Impossible or it did. And then Tom Cruise went insane at everybody for it. That's true, yeah. But this is the reason. Who went, on saying, in, who went insane on the set of this? It's a great question. Probably I mean, what's-his-face. Who? Ugh, you know, the guy who's all, ugh. Mads Mikkelsen? No, the guy who's all, ugh. Oh, Eddie Redmayne. Yes. Edward Redmond. Edward, Edward Redmond. <laughs> yes. Very good. Anyway, this is a series would have been like, oh, fellows. Mm, uh. Who's responsible? Do you think it's going to turn out that it's um, a cast member? Like it what's not any of the crew, but it's like one of the leads, like it was with Batman. Because it doesn't say specifically yeah. that it's that it's a crew. Because yeah. otherwise they'd throw a grip under the bus. They would throw under the grip under the bus, exactly. That's right. Yeah, so I don't know. We'll see, won't we? Uh, well, look, they've already recast one major actor in it, so yep. I'm sure they could do it again. We're putting you in a tank, Red Mane. We're getting a new guy. Yeah. We're getting Hugh Grant. We're going to de age Yeah, why not? It doesn't matter, does it? All right, here we go. We're getting Timothy Chalamet. Timothy Chalamet. Did they, could they afford Timothy Chalamet? Could he afford it? Yes. <laughs> he probably could, I guess. Uh, so we've been talking about The Matrix of late. I'm like, is it just called Matrix? Mm-hmm. What's going on? And it appears as if there was a production gift that was uh, that leaked online mm-hmm. and there is a title. Do you want to have a guess at what it is? It's Matrix or something, isn't it? Yes. Matrix in... in... Resuscitation. Oh. <laughs> That's right. Recompense. Oh. Matrix reciprocation. Nice. It's, um, it's Matrix Red Mane. <laughs> And he's all, Ugh. I got fired, but I'm on this one now. Ugh, spoons. <laughs> uh, yeah, resurrection, there we which go. makes sense because was it resurrections? Uh, might it might be, be resurrections. Might be actually whatever. Plural. 
No, but that's important because yeah, because it's Trinity. Trinity. And, and well, we Neo. know Trinity and Neo are back in some yeah. form. So, but maybe it's they're the actors, Carrie Ann Moss and Keanu Reeves. That's right. It is Resurrections. You are absolutely yes. right. So I apologise for all of those things that I've said and all other things, and also the Weekly Planet posters. If you decide to make all those, they're not that funny, <laughs> so you don't have to do it. To be honest, but you know, if there's nothing better in this episode, mm. it's really up to you at that point. Go to a it? funnier episode. Go to a funnier or episode. Or to take a week off, live yeah. your life. Yeah. What do you do in your in your regular life? Good question. Do that. Enjoy. Go fishing. What do you do? Yeah. Yeah, tell us. You don't have to. Mm. I didn't tell everybody for years what I did for That's this true. show. So. All that funny thing that happened to you at the gym. Fine. Do you want me to tell you? Yeah. Okay. Some. It's not that funny. Somebody said to me. Uh, I didn't say it was funny, James. I said it was heartwarming. I said this was going to be a heartwarming <laughs> story about something that happened to you at the gym. So I've got some I've got some gym friends, right? Yeah. It's mostly because I go during the day. It's mostly me and like mothers, so like a group of mothers just just having a gas, mate. You know sure, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because all, all the men are at jobs, which is how it works in the suburb that I live in. It turns out, but. Uh-huh. Um, so, so they're always looking at you funny. They're like, what's I this guy doing? I think they are doing? a little bit, maybe, yeah, because, yeah, you know, what, what what am I doing? What are you, a foot model, they, <laughs> they say to themselves? I'm why def- can we never see your feet? Because my feet are tiny. That's oh. why I have tiny little feet. But um, what was I going to say? So she she goes, what, what, do, you, what do you do? Uh-huh. And I go, oh, I, um, I, I make podcasts. Big mistake. I know. <laughs> Normally you wouldn't as well. I know, but it's been I've been doing it so long, I can't, can't say. can't fall back, really. I can't fall back on it because I quit teaching at the end of 2015. Mm. So it's weird if it's like. I'm a teacher who hasn't taught in six years. They'd be like, why? <laughs> yeah, exactly. They'd move the children away from you. It's just like, oh. And so I just went, um, yeah, but I, I, I used to be a teacher. And I'm like, huh. oh, okay, yeah. And it's like, because it's something <laughs> that's like, you, yeah. it's something that people know. This is a good litmus test, though, for do people know anything about podcasts? Yeah, yeah the answer is still no, which is good mm. because that means we haven't hit the boom, which will lead to the bust yet. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? AMC. Or they'll just never Game catch on. Stop. They'll just never catch on. That's right, exactly. Yeah. Did you get in any of those um, any of those stocks and shares going on at the no. moment? No. I don't have money for stonks and shares. <laughs> you don't? Yeah. I disagree, Mason. Spend it all on leather jackets. <laughs> I send it all on so, like weird keto cereal. You know, that's that true, you do, yeah. yeah. That's true. What else we got here? Uh, Bro Bible. This is from Bro Bible. We've got some MC New Year's. How they how are they different from the Lad Bible? I guess they're American. You'll have to ask them. I, are the, Bro Let Bible, if you're out there, are you an American division of Lad Bible? Maybe. I'm not, I'm just going to write the same. Hmm. Uh, you consider James saying that you're a radio producer. And then there's Unio Lad. No, that's a whole uni lad. Because then they'd be like, what radio? And I'd be like, Personal at home radio. <laughs> oh, so you're a ham radio enthusiast? No, because that's what essentially we're doing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we're ham radio enthusiasts. Yeah, even though I'm pretty sure that our numbers are better than a lot of Australian radio. And a, and a lot better than a lot of ham radio enthusiasts, probably. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, well, uh, there's a post here from Facebook. Breaker, breaker. This is from Uni Lad. <laughs> I'm out here on the I'm out here on the airwaves. <laughs> Everybody out there driving the big big eighteen wheels in the sky. Well, here it's, it's Meso, and I've got yeah. some news about Dra- the new Dracula reboot. You know what we used and they're to- like, get off the radio. We used to do the the you know the walkie talkies. Yes. Every now and then you could pick up like a truck. Or a kid, do you remember this? So we used to just go on. And- oh, I'm not Superman, James. I can't just pick up a truck. Very good, funny, good stuff. Thank uh, you you said yeah. that would be a heartwarming joke before the show. <laughs> <laughs> Did, didn't I? <laughs> but. Uh, we used to he just loves like, his dad. Yeah, he does. We used to just like, 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 just yell at truck drivers and stuff. Nice. Them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah nice. and then hope they couldn't find us because yeah. they beat us up. And anyway, that's led to you being this ha- the ham radio that's enthusiast. How, that's, that was how I got. Right to- anyway, Zach Young from Facebook says the Lad Bible is just a wannabe bro Bible. So I guess they're not the same. Yeah. Or well, they still could be, and that guy doesn't know it. Anyway, moving on, bro Bible are saying that War Machine is to appear in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oh. So, and also Armor Wars is going to start filming in a couple of months, gearing oh. up for the Armor Wars series. Cool. So there you go. That's fun. Are you excited for that? Uh, yes. Armor Wars. Yeah. Cleaning up messes. There's also a, there was also a rumour this week that, well, not a rumour, a, a rampant speculation this week that uh, War Machine might appear in an upcoming episode of WandaVision. Yes, well, we talked about that in uh, we did, yeah. the episode. So, may, I mean, it's possible that they're being, they, they might be doing some like, you know, some subtle promotion for Armor Wars through yes, everything. Yes, subtle. But go on. Yes. Sorry, go on. Subtle? Subtle. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they're just doing like... That wasn't worth derailing you. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I've lost my place. <laughs> Uh, maybe they're doing some subtle, yeah. uh, subliminal. Oh, subliminal, some subliminal some advertising for for Armor Wars in 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 WandaVision and. I'm into it. Falcon and Winter Soldier. I'm into it. Yeah, everything's linked, isn't it? That's right. In these movies, yes. Uh, Ryan Coogler has also uh, signed up to Disney for a five year television exclusive deal 
with his production company Proxi- Proximity Media, which comes with a whole lot of creatives, including uh, Ludwig Goss. I would have, if I had a production company and my name was Ryan Coogler, call it Coogs Dudes. <laughs> Coogs called Coogs. No, it doesn't work. The one you said is better yeah, yeah, than yeah. what I was going to do then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Brackets fo- and dudettes. And dudettes. Yeah. Everybody. Brackets and other. Other. That's right. NB. Asterisk, asterisk yeah. very inclusive. That's right. Exactly. And people would know. People would know that. I was very the, inclusive. The, the, yeah. The, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's going to be a Wakanda series coming to Disney+, Plus, but also multiple series, including the one I just mentioned, based off the kingdom of Wakanda. Yeah. What do you think about that? Very cool. Yeah. I'd like to see more Wakanda. Daily life in Wakanda. Me too. What's that all about? Mm, uh, there's some goat farming. Yep, there's yep, like yep. spears, standing around with a spear. Yep. Um, there's council meetings. Standing around with a spear, but actually it's a laser spear, but it's yeah. secret because you're on the border. That's right. And you're like, don't look over there. I'm just a regular guy with a spear, not a laser spear. But People are like, chill out. It doesn't have a. What force do you What do you it. mean, not a laser sp- spear? And, and then like, you're like, what do you mean? What do I mean? Yeah. I can't be more specific than that. And then you have to go to the to the you know the guardhouse later, and you have to fill in another form because you have to laser spear a dude who just wouldn't leave. But then they shoot though, questions. do they? They what? should shoot. I think they do shoot. I don't think they do. Wow. Remember when Okoye gets in the ditch with uh, one of those bad guys in Infinity War? Oh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. And, like, hits her with that stick? Yeah. I feel like he could have just shot her. I yeah. love that scene. It's really good. <laughs> um, but also we saw that Thor Love and Thunder has started up. Speaking filming. of goats. Speaking of goats. Because oh, both yeah. his goats are there. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm going to get this forever now. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so egotistical. You won't get it forever. I've you'll already be dead had it eventually. At least once. James, you'll be oh, dead yeah, eventually. Right. My ego was running rampant that's thinking right. that I'm going to live forever. Yeah. Both of his pet goats, tooth, yeah. tooth Grinder and Tooth Nasher. Also, I love other people People are thinking of me. I appreciate that. What am I yeah. complaining about? <laughs> oh, people send me a nice message. Oh, fuck you, James. You're a fucking baby. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's me. That's not somebody who sent me that call, James. Oh. I'm talking to myself. Oh. Um, so, yeah, it's got to say you got my email. <laughs> <laughs> so Thor has long hair and big muscles. He's big muscles again. He's back. And he's got a sort of a sleeveless sort of black mm. and red kind of biker yeah. jacket situation. Vest uh, deal. It looks like it could be a... Um, a Thunderstrike? Yeah, I thought I was going to say um, like a knockoff Ravengers jacket, like one of Peter Oh, Cruz. it could be, yeah. I bet there's a joke where he's like, I had to cut the sleeves off because I'm My so big. My bicep's too big, yeah. Do you think that's going to yeah. happen? And you'll notice you've got sleeves. Yeah, you've got yeah, sleeves, Quill, yeah. yeah. Because we do see that Peter Quill is also in this. Did you see the, the headline that was like, I can't remember who it's from, but it was like, Chris... Hemsworth spotted on set with actor who plays Star Lord. Ouch! Like they're not like relatively <laughs> equal in status. Yeah, right. In terms of popularity, Wild, yeah. or celebrityness. Mm. So there you go. So we'll be, be expecting that some point in the next one to seven to ten years because right. of all the various viruses that we're yeah, getting. Nice. I Pretty think good. probably less than seventeen years, if I'm honest. I hope it's less. Uh, one more bit of news because I always save the best for last. It's official, Mason. Uh, the Snyder Cut is rated R. Yes. I'm not even really sure what that means in the context of Australia because it's different. I think this is the – yeah, so the US would be in the So M- it's not – N- yeah, so – but, yeah. So in Australia, R is about equivalent to NC-17. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it won't be that. It will not. So I say, who cares? Yeah. Are you excited, though? Yeah. Four hours, baby. Batman's going to say the F word. Oh, my goodness. I fucking hate this. Aquaman's going to say the C word. Cod? Cod. Is he allowed to say that? Yeah. but he Nice only, cod piece, Batman. Only in the context of my favourite fish is a cod. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, 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 cool. Out of context, it's rude. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Now, Mason, we, we, we warned people up top, threatened, that we were going to have a couple of guests coming in, and they've snuck in somehow. We don't know how they got through the well, door. You, you oh, let, they went through the door, actually. You, you <laughs> we invited them in. Them in. You invited we them in. We had a chat. You've given them each <laughs> yeah, a kombucha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. They've yeah, joined I, the bourgeoisie, <laughs> a term that I just invented and I'm right. very proud of. <laughs> We've plugged in some extra mics. Kombucha with me, kombucha. <laughs> Let's booch today. Let's booch today. today. Yeah. Uh, it's Andy and Al from Two in the Think Tank. Returning guests. My goodness. My goodness. Yeah, we, never we, I would say the day. After we last must, time, I swore I'd never come back. <laughs> we, must have, we must have done a really good job. <laughs> this is your third time I think this now. is our third time I on the podcast. Yeah. the most now, probably, maybe. We're, that just seems the unfair. Yeah, you guys are just the most. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for having us back. Oh, we're glad um, we can have people back with the you know the virus is not as virusing at the moment. That's right. At the yeah. moment, we're sort of we're, we're being undervirused, and so <laughs> we're allowed to be human near humans. Yeah, I like yeah. how you have to say that as well. It's like so. Or well, you post a photo. It's like so. Just so you know, like we, there was testing, and you yeah. Know, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. numbers are actually down in Melbourne at the moment. Yeah, yeah. We, we waited until there was three weeks of, of, of no cases, uh, community spread, until we we could, we could do this. Exactly. 
But you've got a new thing that we should mention before we get in our topic. Oh, <gasps> yes, I would uh, love to mention a new exciting. thing. It's called The Pop Test. It's a science comedy quiz oh my goodness. Uh, produced with the help of the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. You can get it on anywhere you get podcasts. And how many How many, How many? many episodes? Cause you're, are they recorded? Is that right? Or they're yeah. not recorded? Yeah, no, they're all recorded. It's yeah. all been done. So it's you all... feel good about it. You're not like, this is going to bottom out at any point. You're like, this is strong all the way through. Just oh, to, I don't to... feel good about anything. <laughs> Let's be absolutely clear. There is no risk of me feeling good about something I've made. Oh, good. Okay. But, 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 it, but it went pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> it went pretty well, and there were some big guests on there. That's right, yeah. Um, like, yeah. Uh, you know, like we had Sean McAuliffe on yeah. there. We had the, the catering show, Kate's. Oh, my goodness. Um, we had Dilrook. We had uh, a bunch of people. Yeah. Uh, we had Norman Swan, which for anybody who doesn't live in Australia is – uh, our virus daddy. Yeah, uh, but, if you, but but if speaking of him being a daddy, you might know him from the interview that his son jo- uh, Jonathan yes. Swan did with Donald Trump. It was quite a good interview. The confusing oh, main the confused yeah. face girl. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so if you want to know what his dad's like, yeah. Yeah. if his you're dad's a fan of a comedy quiz about if science, you're a fan of a meme of a guy <laughs> shuffling some papers, looking at them confusedly, and there is a a link there. You would like this. That's that was right. how we pitched this show. Um, yeah, yeah. If you want, <laughs> we got up. If you like his confused face, you should hear what his dad's confused face sounds like. <laughs> anyway, what's the show about? Tell us what it's about. <laughs> uh, we pick a big topic from science. Mm. We sort of we have three rounds. First, we go through the history of our discovery of what we know about that field of science, like you know, like evolution or the atom. How do we get to our current understanding? Then we have a middle round where we just ask people to make up some bullshit. And then we have a speed round at the end because everything has a speed round. It sounds like it should be a televisual show also. Is that something you could work on maybe? You, you, could, you, could, you would know somebody who knows television, <laughs> Sean McAuliffe. We, 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 know, mm-hmm. we know people. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, yeah. We'll We're just trying in. to get through this season. Let's see if it can all get aired. <laughs> and, then, and then if we can do that, then maybe, you know, there's, there's an episode yeah. where Greg Larson mentions semen within the first, 30 I don't know, seconds? 30 seconds. So, <laughs> Excellent. So, look, we'll see if we make it all. And this is on the... And that, yeah. has, that episode has not aired yet? It's not aired. No, that's yeah. actually the last episode because good call, it's, it's very one good of... Call. <laughs> good call. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's, it's also one of the funnest. It's also a very, very funny episode. Because it's entirely possible that that will air... And Kerry Packer will be listening. And he'll right. call up Channel 9 yeah. and he will say, get this off the air. That's right. And they'll pull it off. <laughs> In the, like, what was that? What was the... Doug was, Mulleray's uh, longest uh, term video. Yes. <laughs> like, Don't no. test me, Al, I know. He has this locked and loaded. <laughs> yeah. That, that's awesome. I mean, everything you guys have done has been terrific. I feel like us being here is the greatest gift you could ever give us. Mm. Wow. Um, because being in your presence, seeing you both. You know, I just saw James and Mesa there. They have, there's a trampoline out there. And they, I don't know if you know this, they just jump on it together. <laughs> <laughs> when they go. I thought it was for the kids, but they actually just jumped. They were holding hands and, and See, twirling. Podcast, singing. podcast, podcast. <laughs> it's actually really beautiful. So it's actually, yeah. you don't realize how close these guys are. Right? You, guys, you guys have a show coming off for the Melbourne yeah. International Comedy oh, Festival. we do. Which I like oh to gosh. think I'm not just jinxing by saying it will definitely happen this year. It will definitely right? happen. <laughs> Seems yeah. like it's happening, right? Well, yeah, we, we, ha- we have a show called Teleport. Tickets are on sale. It's at the Melbourne Comedy Festival. Um, it's us as fake engineers, but we're actually real engineers in real life. So right. we're actually the only people who are both real engineers and fake engineers at the same time. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, and we, 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 we feel like we've come up with a teleportation device, and I think we're trying to sell it to the investors. And uh, i got to say... Some some hijinks occurs. Yeah, yeah. you're saying it doesn't go into t- entirely smoothly. Not it's not the smoothest it could go. It's a bumpy road, even though you don't have to. You, oh my God. you know, a teleportation device that would allow you to to bypass roads. Could you think you think maybe you could derive some humor from that? The fact that it's a bumpy road. You know, we're gonna. Can you make those changes? It's probably too late in the day to put that in now. <laughs> I yeah, mean, it's about look. teleportation. I think <laughs> incorporating roads mm. somehow is going to actually mm. make it a little. It's going to be going to require some rewrites. But you know what? As a favour to you, yes, thank you. Yeah. It's going to be. It's been a few weeks. There's only a few weeks to go, and and, and you have several kids. But I'm sure. We'll find <laughs> That's the time right. Somehow. Yeah, don't worry. We we still have to find the time to finish writing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, it's, it's the shows. Well, both shows are linked below. Uh, thank the, you the so much. The podcast that you yeah. can you can listen to right now. My goodness, just terrific. But, but but you're not just here to to spruik no, a terrific no, show <laughs> and live show. Heaven I thought that forbid. is part of it. Um, this is probably something you should have done with Dave Warnicky because he does a book cheek podcast. But I think you guys are even better because you're engineers and you've read things, books, correct? Is that Absolutely. Right? And we've yeah. just been on Dave, Dave Warnicky's book <laughs> oh, cheek right. podcast. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've just come straight from it, actually. Hot. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. What, uh, what, All booked up. What, uh, <laughs> what book did you uh, talk about? We'll bleep it out. 
Because obviously we don't want to spoil it here. I think <laughs> it's out, didn't it? Oh, it's out? I think oh, you can... There was one episode that came out and then the second episode came out. It's a Grapes of oh, Wrath. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So it's such a big, big old book. So he split it up do into get, two. Do people get really excited about what book he's going to do? They and do. then if yeah. people spoil it, they get angry. Sad and, sad yeah, and angry, wow. yes. Wow. Yeah. Sangry. Yeah. 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 Book Sangria. Has. Yes. So what we're going to do, we're going to do um, one of our famous episodes with extra people where we just list some things that we remember. And in, in particular, mm. the, the, the topic is movies that were based on books, which as we discussed uh, prior to this is almost everything. Yeah. <laughs> but but we've narrowed down what books means, right? Yes. Like because a lot of things are, could be considered books. Yeah. So like, what would you say about Beowulf? I've written that down. And then that's a long-form poem. This is setting some crowd <laughs> I mean, when I was doing my research, I didn't get into sagas. <laughs> okay, gotcha, but... gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> and also, you know, sometimes when we talk about these things, we'll have neither read the book mm. nor watched the movie. <laughs> and, and Beowulf is probably a prime example of that. <laughs> sometimes that's perfect. When, when, we, when we do these particular episodes, mm. I imagine, like, the room is slowly filling with water and mm. I'm just grasping it, whatever. <laughs> whatever references I fully understand, which is almost none of them, in an attempt to escape. But uh... I wonder if Beowulf helped holds the record for like the longest time between when the book came out. It wouldn't even have been a book, right? It would have just been like an oral tradition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then when the film finally got made, you know, it's just development hell. It's the very bi- hard Bible, to get something the through. The Old Testament? Ah, yes. the Bible. Yeah. Yes, famously <laughs> old book. Yeah, that, well, that was going to be one of my first uh, one of my first suggestions. It was going to be Passion of the Christ sure, based yeah. off yeah. of, uh, you know, the book, which I think... And do you was, think it's better than the... Better for than the me, book? it was better. It was just shorter, I think, and oh, I yeah. like that. I mean, a lot of the time, you know, I mean, a lot of time when you're watching a movie based off mm-hmm. of a book, you kind of... And you've read the book and you're like, oh, they cut out all these scenes that I loved. <laughs> like that, and, you know, and I, they did, definitely did a bit of that in there. You know, yeah, okay, yeah. There's no walking on water or anything like that. Do you, think, do you think any there are any churches where they just play snippets from Passion of the Christ Almost instead of reading certainly. the... Uh, yeah, I would say so. Or they get the altar boys to act it out, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's stage. good. <laughs> but, yeah. but it's like it's the stage version of the film rather than just... Stuff from the Bible. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's when right. you get a substitute priest in, he just puts on Passion of the Christ. <laughs> All right, everyone, get, sit down. Get comfortable. Yeah, I'm here. Drags out the TV. Yeah, it's just, just rattling out of one of those old trolleys. Yeah. yeah I love it. <laughs> uh, I guess we could say Moses. Like Moses. Are we doing Bible stuff? Why not? <laughs> We're doing exclusively <laughs> Bible yeah. stuff until, yeah. until we run out of jokes about it. Did you see yes. the Ten Com- Commandments with Charlton Heston? You remember that one? No, he was busy that day. Yes. Oh, he's, done he's done it. Done it he's again. done it. <laughs> I don't get it. I didn't see it with him. He was yeah, he, he was been busy dead. being dead. Saying oh. that he, I said, yeah, yeah, here he oh is. my god! <laughs> oh, what I'm gonna that? have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Best reaction that's ever gotten. Actually, so there are. There, I guarantee you, there are people at home who have never gotten that joke though, because I know you've yep. done it a few times. That's so fine. Don't feel bad. It's yeah. not really a joke, so I'm fine. <laughs> I with think that. it's a joke. You guys, are, you do jokes. It's a joke, right? Yeah, that's, that's a joke. That is a joke. That's <laughs> a. That's a Oh, a genuine. Very good. Okay, I want to ask you guys specifically about this one because we're let's do Bible stuff. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> okay. What do you think of the Da Vinci Code uh, and the other one, Angels and Demons, which oh. they made into Tom Hanks thrillers? Now, I have not seen the second one, okay. The Angels and the Demons, but that was a terrible book. Yes. You've read the book. I have read the book. I've read oh. both the books. I think on they're an, on excruciating books. Yeah. Well, actually, I've only read Da Vinci Code, and it was very difficult. They are, they are, they are excruciating. And I think what, you know, you put it in the hands of a, of a talented director like Ronald. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ronald McCowan. <laughs> and he, 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 he can shave off a lot of the uncomfortable oh, edges. I agree. You chuck a Tommy Hanks in front yeah, of yeah. the screen. Give him that hair. Yeah, that hair he had, and it's 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 entirely watchable. Yeah. So in the movie, in the second movie, mm. which is Paul a, Bettany a, play, is it Paul Bettany? No, that's Ewan the McGregor. first movie. Who's it, Paul what? Bettany? Is the is the albino monk who whips? Mm. I'm just trying to get to the. the <laughs> I'm, I'm, tr- I'm trying to get to the parachuting. <laughs> I know, I know. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. There's a there's a para- the parachuting pope. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> is that in the book? Uh, yeah, that, okay, is, okay, that is the plot. Yeah. And the, the book is a. The, this guy wants to destroy the Vatican with yeah. antimatter. That's right. To create a false miracle that will allow him to become the new pope. And he's young. It's, and he's young. People are like, this guy's young. He's got it, but he was a bad guy. He no, but he looked at that and said, mm, no, young that, pope. Let's is that turn the same that into something. character that they turned into the young pope TV series? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah. The parachuting pope? <laughs> Bloody well, I hope so. With them. <laughs> Given the choice, I would definitely green light anti-matter pope over young pope, though. Oh, yeah. Just as a, as yeah. a concept. <laughs> there actually, there was an anti-pope. What is it? There an was an anti-pope. There was something. There was there was a period of time where there were two popes, and there was a pope and an anti-pope. Was the anti-pope a satanic pope? 
I think he was just they voted the the, the church split up. They chose another pope. Yeah. People called him the anti pope. And I just think it'd be like the Antichrist was that what the idea? If you threw them at each other really hard, or is that A U N T Y Pope? Mm, so they were like, American, so like Edna, and, and she was like the first time. He's just sort of like a big lady. Oh and she, yeah, you go to her house. She makes you tea. Great to see you. The, but I, I, what the information I've got here on the anti pope is it's, it says about this person it's commonly considered to be the earliest anti pope, which means there's been multiple anti popes mm. running about over the years. Incredible. <laughs> This is, I, I like, like how declare, this is declare bit myself bit. the new, if the position's <laughs> vacant, I might declare myself the new anti pope. <laughs> yeah, why not? Absolutely. But anyway, I think those movies are better than the books. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And then, again, they're not like great, like amazing movies, but they're just they're thrillers and Tom Hanks and whatever, and he's running about. So is it just a case of Tom yeah. Hanks' charisma carries it over the line, or is no? It, I that think is... there's competent filmmaking there. Yeah, I right. Well, I yeah. agree. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, we could put both of those in the poster, I think. I agree. Carries I, um, it over the line in competent film. <laughs> it's fine, I guess. I was trying to think, this is a hard thing for me, I was trying to think of like comedy movies, like where you've got a funny book. Mash? Right, and you successfully, was that a book? It might have been, yeah. I'll look into that. But you <laughs> successfully then turn it into a equally funny film. I think that is like, because there are so many great movies based on books. Yeah. That's true. We're all agreed here. I yeah. can um, The Godfather. <laughs> that's that's based oh on books. Oh, my God. Books. Famously. Famously. Terrific book. Book. Never read it. <laughs> no. Good book? No, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't yeah, know I have no idea did. either. Yeah. But, you know, I heard the films were good. But, <laughs> but you've like, that actually <laughs> funny ones, every funny book I've liked that I've gone to see the film mm. has almost always made me sad. What about like a high fidelity? How are you feeling on that? Yeah, I asked my good? wife her suggestions. That was the first thing she said. She said high fidelity is a great adaptation. I said, you're right, it is. She's done it. Yeah, That's she na- nailed it in one. I don't think they've and done And her name? Mr. Sunday Movies. That's right. <laughs> We're married. <laughs> we had a little ceremony on the trampoline. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's a, look, I wonder, is there a chance that, you know, some people have too good a delivery in their brain mm. and that when you read a funny book, you nail the delivery. You make it so funny. Sure, yeah. Right? Because there's no there... interference. It's exactly. got that clear like line to the reader. And then you put it in the mouth of actors or babes, you know, babes. Yeah. <laughs> they're supposed to be babies. You know, that, that's yeah. a stupid thing. No, I'm, I'm not talking about the actors and babes. I'm so sorry. No, I want to apologize. Nobody say anything. Let, you, him walk, let him talk his way out of this. <laughs> Al doesn't consider babes to be actors. <laughs> this is interesting. So you think there should be a Best Supporting Actor oh, and a Best yeah. Supporting Babe award? He's, he's talking about the adaptation of Shakespeare's Bikini Car Wash. <laughs> 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 Um, look, through the lens from which I was speaking earlier, I wasn't aware of the wider You're speaking issues. through a lens. Um, See, that's your problem. Yeah. Mm. Um, you look through a yeah, lens. Yeah, look, I think, I think um, some actors can't get the lines as good. Uh, yeah. I also so. think, though, that, like, it is just that problem of, like, comedy works the best when you hear it the first time, right? Yeah. And then if you really liked the jokes in a book, and you then go and see it in a movie, you're like, why doesn't this joke why doesn't it seem as funny yeah, now? Yeah, it doesn't land. Yeah, because yeah, it was didn't your, surprise yeah, me it was, at all. It was your favourite book and you read it ten times. Yeah, and like, yeah exactly. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, well, you guys, as, between all of us, we've watched somewhere between zero and I think five episodes of the TV series The Watch, which, mm. is, yeah. which is based on... I mean, I, just, I was just looking at the novel. title of the episode and it says movies based on books, not shows. So I'm just going to have a veto of this. Okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we extensively talked about this before the show that we were going to talk about it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I have to step in. And the, and the title of the episode is decided. It's already it's up. up. That's, yeah, we don't. People are listening to it, so it's yeah. up. We actually don't choose the titles of the episodes. They're just sent to us <laughs> okay. from a mysterious source. We know. <laughs> Come in an envelope. Yeah, it yeah, comes yeah, to one of those dark. Illuminati <laughs> devices, you know, the mm. wheels, yeah, Da Vinci mm-hmm. Code style. But sorry, continue. A codex. Um, Thank you. Do mm. you guys think that it's good, this show? I, uh, well, maybe I'll let Alistair go first. Wow, thank you so much. Um, well, this is okay. Now, this is speaking from somebody who hasn't read the book, but I did play a lot of the Discworld mud. Mm. Right? The so multi-user I, dungeon. The multi-user dungeon that is entirely a text-based RPG uh, on a like a DOS kind of screen. Sure, yeah. Uh, and I got a good feel for Ankh More Pork, <laughs> which I believe is how it was the first time I said it out loud. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, um, but watching the TV show, first episode, I was like. I'm not going to like this. Firstly, I already have a diff- uh, an aversion to um, British TV shows. 
Um, what, really? Yeah, I do. I just go, I go. oh, how are you guys going to not make this boring? Do you think it's like it's a cheap thing, it's an accent thing? What are we? I think there's often a cheap look yeah. to it. Um, and then and then another part is just dumb stubbornness. Um, so, yeah, it's me being a dumb guy. Were you bur- have you been burned before? What burned you? Um, what was the last I thing you think, burned that burned you? I think it would just be that thing where you'd flick from one channel to another. And then Stephen Fry would be on TV, on TV. He'd be in an office and he'd be talking about something briefly. Mm-hmm. And then you'd go, oh, my God, this is f- so boring. And then you'd just <laughs> flick away. And then you'd base an opinion on that sort of three seconds entirely. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Anyway, I watched, I watched, the, I watched the first episode. I, wasn't, I was like, oh, this is not going to be very good. It like, doesn't feel like the jokes are kind of landing in the way that, that when I have read some Discworld stuff, it's like his jokes are so good and strong. And they're like, you know, the, anyway – uh, and his concepts are, you know, it's, it's like it's it's always so jam packed with really strong comedic ideas, and it didn't feel like these people were nailing it. But then I watched two or three episodes, and I thought the the main character was weird. And then I was like, and then I really started to like the main character, and I thought that the way that he was, I was like, oh, it's actually really hard for an actor to be like that all the time. Because I went and looked at photos of what the actor looks like normally, and just looks like a normal guy. Mm. And then, <laughs> and, then and then suddenly I was like, but oh. on, the, on the television, he's a bit odd. He's yeah, he was strange, but he was you know, is it the clothes. He was a real oh. character. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just like I, I like I like the way that they've uh, put the like they, they've set it in that there's an aspect I think that, that that appeals to me in which they've gone. It is set in this kind of weird old timey thing, but at the same time, you get it. It's like we're, we're still can just wear normal shirts and stuff. Like yeah, that. Right, okay, and just yeah, like yeah. whatever. Who cares? You know, you it's get like it. office shirts with pens in them and yeah, <laughs> basically, yeah, like people were just kind of wearing like a jacket from like Uniqlo or Uniqlo or whatever. Yeah, right, that. And yeah. Then, um, and then a couple of people in costume, but but I thought um, the stories were good, and I could see how it's like it's a very yeah. I was enjoying it anyway. Okay. And Matt Berry's a talking sword. Oh, that's, oh, that's good. Cool. I like that. Yeah. And the guy who plays Bunk uh, in in the, the wire. wire is Death. Oh yeah. no way! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would not have picked that. It's a weird clash because I think American accents and British accents always sound so strange next to each other. Same thing. Why? Why? I think I find Australians. Sounds so weird in American movies if they have they keep their Australian accent. It is weird. I, it always yeah. sounds just like, oh, this is sausage sizzle. We're just having a sausage sizzle. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing like Eric Banner and Funny People. And yeah, like, I know that's what he sounds really like. Really uncomfortable. This is... I would prefer it if Hollywood acted like we don't really exist. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with that. I, you know, <laughs> yeah, not good. I yeah. like it. Yeah, but. Overall, I was enjoying the, the TV okay. series. Yeah. Is this something that you think people are enjoying? I have no idea. I've got no read on this. Uh, I, I have two points of reference. Okay. One is uh, me. I watched the first episode and I had the worst time of my life. <laughs> okay. Interesting. And two, uh, my, my friend Martin Dunlop is watching it and tweeting about it and he seems to also be having a really bad time. We're both okay. big fans of the disc world and we've read all the stories. It's a little bit cringy in places. Oh, nice. Yeah. There's some, you know. Well, that's some, death on the internet. Yeah, there's, some, there's, some, there's some dance sequences Towards the, the oh dear toward, yeah that's so uh, like flash mob style in a way sure sort of oh. magically induced dance mm. situations yeah it's um it's it's a show that I probably if I was a really big fan of the Discworld novels uh, I probably wouldn't get people together and be like let's all watch this together yeah if, if you're no. not even if I I, th- I think the only way I'd watch it with other people is if we were all fan huge fans of the Discworld books and we're like well let's just grit our teeth and sort of. Get through yeah. this together. It's not into- – I don't think it's a bad show. I think it's, it's really – it's interesting in a way. They've made choices, right? They have, They've yeah. made big, big choices that have cost a lot of money. Yeah, I And mean, they yeah. have stuck to them and that's incredible. And especially, you know, <laughs> when, you've got, when you've got a big thing that like that with huge fans and a really established world, to make the choice of we're going to chuck out most of this yeah. is – Does it to make it more like Game of Thrones-esque, do you think? It doesn't yeah. come across very. No, I, I think thing. it's an attempt to just move away from everybody's wearing a robe with stars on it mm. and, and and waving a wand mm. and uh, sort of. I like. I feel like the 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 Discworld novels are sort of you know it's they're satirizing your Lord of the Rings and and the, right. and, the and the fantasy tropes at the time. And I think they're this production has been like okay, well let's satirize what is currently happening. In fantasy and also entertainment generally, yeah, maybe I I I wasn't totally sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it didn't feel like the comedy was very strong at all. Yeah, like especially for Discworld, which the comedy is very strong. I know. I think it's just it, so hard because so much of it comes from the narrator in the like. And yeah. how do you translate 
a the funny voice of a narrator explaining things sometimes at length, sometimes really extraneous details. You know, all that little detail yeah. that's in that narrator's voice that you just you just can't you can't put that you can't put that into the voice of one of the characters. You so can't cram it in. So somewhere. it's then interesting they don't they, it doesn't have a narrator. Yeah, like you'd think they do if they if they got a Stephen Fry. You know, according to Al, the most boring yeah. man in the world, <laughs> uh, like a recognizable figure to like lend some uh, credence but, to it. But you see, I'm impossible to please because oh, I recently yeah. watched Good Omens and they did do that. They did, yeah. They had a narrator Didn't like and it. I hated that even more. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, no. That one's that one's widely regarded. I, I watched that recently. I, I liked that it. a lot. Yeah, yeah. But I, I didn't read any of the source material though, so yeah. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Um, no, it, it's definitely me. I'm but, wrong. Yeah, okay, Andy, as long as it's you, good. Like when I first read a Discworld book, it was only about – Five years ago, and then I realized that Andy, who read them as a kid, and like, and having known Andy, like, I'd been, I read those books, and I saw the joke formats, and I went, "Oh, this is Andy's source code. Like, this is <laughs> what is behind Andy's personality and Andy's humor and everything yeah. like that. Like, there is actually no Andy. He is just <laughs> you're a, right, like a I'm compiled an version of of those books <laughs> in that's taken human form. So that's maybe right. why he. It's like it's like that scenario where like a person sees a person who's exactly like them and they want to kill them. Mm. That's why Andy try, tries to destroy these these productions uh, on a sort of on something with an audience like this, yeah. so mm. that he can be the only one. Yeah, yeah that's right. Exactly that's like a, you. C- c- correct interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Oh, that's a little bit inside. I like that. Yeah. 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 Thanks so much. I, yeah, I, I did read them a lot. Yeah. Did you play the mud? I didn't play the mud, but I did play the point and click adventure with mm. Eric Idle as the Which voice of Rinsworth. Oh, that's difficult. fun. Um, it was it was it was really fun. I mm. found that very funny. That, yeah. was, that was a good adaptation. Mm. Good. I never played that. <laughs> the mud didn't have any voices. Nah. <laughs> I played so many hours. That's where oh, where yeah. most of my uni hours went. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I gotta look it up. I'm yeah, sure it's still. still I just checked it out last night. It's still up there. Yeah, and, okay. Um, you can play it and go in. Um, I just want to quickly mention uh, we're probably not really going to talk about Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit. Um, just but we know they exist. We know they exist, and uh, that's good. That they yeah. exist. All of those. So things glad exist. about that. Yeah, mm. just so those are adaptations of books. books yeah, into that's right. a, yeah, a movie. Let's, which... let's let's let's. What about something? What about Jurassic Park? Because the the, the the novel is they're different. They're very different. Of course. And they're they're, more, they're very science based. And there's like diagrams there's of more DNA. Circuit and, and, <laughs> more circuit diagrams. Yeah, exactly. Box, yeah. yeah. Like, are they like robots in the book? Like the dinosaurs. Yeah. No, no. They're, 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 <laughs> no, the circuit because there's like hacking at sequences and. Oh, like wow. in, like, in, like the, in, um, the, in the in the movie, and he puts in circuit diagrams. Like, yeah, yes. like, like in the in the uh, in the uh, movie, for example, one of the kids might hack into a, a you know the the mm. gates of the Jurassic Park computers yeah. or something like that. Very good. Well, in the book, you'll see the actual menus, like they've been they've been illustrated in the book. Wow. Yeah, like and, and they'll be clicking and. So kids can read that and know actually how to hack into the yeah. gates of a dinosaur enclosure. Yeah. Precisely, yes. Now, is, it's educational. Are they <laughs> using hacking to mean navigating the folders in a, uh, Mostly, like, yeah. in a computer? Because <laughs> it was 91 or whatever it came out, I can't remember. But, yeah. Because that was it was weird that that kind of operating system type thing never, the one that was in the movie never took on, the one where you, you travel like you're flying <laughs> yeah. above the folders and kind of find it. It's like just slowly yeah. gliding. Oh, they're, like, they're all unnamed blocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you, how do you you're, find an, you're in your job at an office and you're doing that and your boss is yelling over your shoulder. And you're like, I'm, I'm flying through the folders as p- fast as I can, boss. We're doing we, my best. We've made computers to, do, to store all our data, but we've done it in such a way that it takes longer to find anything than yeah. just walking through a big room. <laughs> That's it. I think also the book, though, it's more sinister. It's It's darker. And I know at one point James Cameron wanted to make it and Spielberg made it kind of this like the wonder of dinosaurs and nature and whatever. And there, there was a lot of science in it, mm. obviously. But like the book, like I can imagine James Cameron version would have been more like Aliens-esque. Of, yeah. I think it was going to go with more horror elements, which I think would have been more like closer to the book. But I think they're both great. You think it's fine, Jurassic Park, but I, I, but I think it's great. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely like one of the first and best uh, cinema, best first cinema experiences I think I'd had as mm. a kid where you're like, there's this 
incredible like yeah. that and you're just a kid and you just see somebody get stepped on by a dinosaur and so you're like all right I all, did, right. all right that's my thing i didn't <laughs> watch it for so long because i saw like caught a glimpse of it over the back of the couch when somebody was watching it one time and i was so terrified really yeah, yeah of the t-rex eating people in a car or something i was yeah. like I will not be anywhere near this. <laughs> I will build my life around avoiding this film. <laughs> and so how old were you, were you when you saw it? Then? Oh, I'd say like 25. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and what did like you think? Was all right? <laughs> Pretty scary. Yeah. Pretty scary. <laughs> you were right. Yeah. <laughs> did you watch any of the others? Or did, did that? I've of... seen the new one. No, I, th- I think I've seen all of them now. Mm. Yeah, probably. Hey, that yeah. new one. Sorry, this is just like a slight. So there yeah. was a huge preview. This is all the sides. Don't worry. There, about okay, it. great. There was a huge pre- uh, like like trailer or preview where there was like people just in like a campground or whatever in trailers and yeah, stuff. That's and then a dinosaur. Or the next one. Oh, that's the one that's still yet yeah, to come. Yeah, that's next. July, maybe. Right. I can't that's remember. The, uh, a Time yeah. to Die? Is that the one? That's exactly yeah. right. Yes. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's the name of the new park in the oh, right. <laughs> Jurassic <laughs> Park. It's Time to Die. We, they're, like, we may as well. they're like, why lie yeah. about it? It's, this is going to go badly. It's, yeah. gonna, it's gone badly every other time. You've, you've, you've seen our track record. Yeah. Line why up. Do you, we'll take your money, but we're yeah. not sure why you're offering it to us, quite frankly. One at a time, just a disinfected kid, just waving people through the gates. <laughs> 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 you go just this time you go straight into the mouth of the, of the T-Rex. And we found a, actually a lot of the other stuff was just sunk cost. Yeah. It wasn't getting used. Yeah. <laughs> and people never even got to it. Yeah, that's it. Well, you you, we, you guys mentioned No Time to Die. Uh, there's a bunch of James Bond movies that are based on books, but the mm. most different one is probably Casino Royale, which is like name only. That's one that you've read, Mason? Read Casino Royale, sure. And... I mean, again, it's, speaking of diagrams, there's a lot of people explaining how um, baccarat works. There's a lot of yeah, <laughs> fascinating. There's a lot of there's a lot of games of baccarat happening in real time. So it's if you if you if you enjoy that. So it's is like it, I've got a two, but he's got a two also. I think it's like is it like that? What is now this? let's wait and see what happens. <laughs> is that what the key to being a like a prolific writer is? Is that basically you you know because like I know. Uh, Melville put into Moby Dick a bunch of just descriptions of different types of whales, and it's like you just basically get a textbook on or like a well. You know? uh, I, I people may be aware there's a there's like an airport airport book writer called Lee Child. Oh, he, yeah. he created uh, Jack Reacher, ah, famous, famously yeah. enormous man who's played by Tom Cruise in the Jack Reacher movies. Yeah. And if you look at if if you just look up like Jack Reacher choice passages, there's a there's a scene in one of his books where. Jack Reacher checks e- his emails and it's like he moves the mouse and the cursor moves on the screen and he clicks the folder. Ah, that contains the files, he thinks to himself. And it's, to himself. And it's literally, that's, that, I've, I've read a few and that's literally all his books. Like it's is, just, it, is it the case of like this is when email was new and Lee Charles had just gone to like his niece's house and watched her open an email and had his mind absolutely blown and said, yeah, I have got been, to yeah. communicate yeah. this wonder of technology. And, and he's just writing for people who are also having their mind blown <laughs> by technology and they're like, I get I get it. I've The grandkids have shown me how to do yeah, this. He so, really yeah. brought that email to life. You've got to read him. Nobody writes an email <laughs> Scene <laughs> like Lee Child. <laughs> An email scene. <laughs> yeah. I I watched this recently the other day, actually, American Psycho, but I've never read the book. I've read the book. Yeah, which is boring. Came sealed in plastic when I bought it. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Rated R. Like a body bag kind of thing? Or like a. No, like a. It'd be like cool, a, though. <laughs> that would sell be, oh, it that'd in body be bags. very cool, yeah. yeah. So yeah, a kid yeah. couldn't. Open it. So a kid couldn't open it in the bookshop, yeah. Okay. And read all the naughty passages. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's lots of sex and murder. And sex and murder, yeah. yeah. Chainsawing. Yeah. Does he look at himself in the mirror while he's having sex, like Sometimes in the book? Sometimes he does, yeah. yeah. Oh, great. But it's mostly, I mean, the, the device of that book is that it's ultimately really, really, really dull and then very, very, very violent. Mm. But it's imagine like 30 chapters of that in a row. It's like he describes mm. like his workout routine and he describes what he's wearing and he's like, you know, the cologne he's putting on mm. and then he goes to work and then he murders somebody and then the day starts again and it's just that over and over again. And like the device is meant to be, oh, I see, his life is so mundane, then he done a murder. But yeah. it's really dull, and and the the mm. book the movie really cuts to the chase. Well, they had that of, scene once at the start yeah, where he does his routine and yeah. skincare and crunches. It's all that, and, but you have to imagine it with the theatre of the mind. So Yuck, would, I say. Yeah, <laughs> you would you would say that the the movie's better? Yes. Yeah, yeah. it's great actually because a lot of the time 
like movies books are really long. Yeah, and then they do have uh, <laughs> they right. do have like a, a lot of extraneous stuff because people are just trying to fill up page numbers. Yeah. I guess. But I feel <laughs> that click, click movies are, <laughs> movies are getting longer and books are getting shorter, and I think yeah, eventually they're going to meet. Yeah, <laughs> it'll take just as they're long. They're all forty minutes each. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah. I would read more books if they were 40 minutes. Like if it was just kind of like you could just – Yeah, a novelette. I think you're yeah. referring to yeah. children's like books. A, like even smaller than a novella. Okay. Like, yeah. Like a, I, yeah, a novelette. One of my – when I was trying to think of funny – Books that books funny books that have been successfully adapted to funny movies. I was like, maybe the most successful one is Shrek. Oh, yeah, Shrek's a kid's book, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if kid's books count. But like yeah, I remember when I first saw Shrek – I thought it was one of the funniest things I'd ever seen. Shrek is funny. Yeah. Like it's become <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, no, it is. It is. But it's become and it's I guess I think the one weakness of, of it is it's very pop culture heavy, mm, which mm, kind of dates, dates it. it. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of very good jokes in Shrek yeah. and visual gags and character work and strong cast, you know, like yeah. Brian has sex with a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> That's that funny. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, on the opposite end of that. <laughs> In book or movie form. Yeah. Funny. I'd, I'd listen to it via audio. Yeah. If were audio. <laughs> Donkey, dragon, sort of intercourse thing. Um, on the opposite what end of that. What about as a mud? You know what? I would try that. If there was a mud, somebody wrote a mud where they described you as a you're donkey. The donkey. You get to, you're a donkey. You get to make choices, sex choices, <laughs> on, on how you're going to do this don- uh, this dragon. <laughs> Obviously, if it was just a donkey doing a donkey, I don't know if I would play that mud. But maybe. I, mean, I would try it as you know, training. Where's the escapism? Yeah. <laughs> as training for while I wait for the dragon one to come mm. up. Um, but uh, the, on the opposite end of sort of a kid's book becoming funny is uh, – uh, where the wild things are. Yeah, that's dreary, isn't it? It's like it's like they've taken a book which was pretty fun. Like yep. it's like kind of fun. I mean, it's like it doesn't go for that long. But then you know the kids kind of having a good. And then somehow they made all the monsters super depressed. Yeah, <laughs> and they're it's like, about growing up and depression. And, mm, yeah, and getting real sad. And then like I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I didn't find any fun in that movie. Did you yeah, watch Black Jones? Your kids? Yeah. No. 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 no this was, <laughs> This was, I was like I was like I think I was on a plane and I was like oh let's just see let's just see what this is like it, and then it you, looks good it looks really and it's, good. Oh, the animatronics Beautiful. are amazing and the soundtrack is uh, is a great album mm. I have it on vinyl really yeah I listen to it a lot books based on vi- no nothing <laughs> vinyl <laughs> vinyl based on movies based on books yeah, there that's we go. another episode <laughs> we'll get to that yeah no it's I, I was gonna say I thought you were gonna say Cat in the Hat. Yeah, Which I a, haven't a, seen, but um, it just looks like a nightmare. I've seen bits and pieces, and I think both of those those live action um, the Grinch Dr. Zeus ones, The Grinch and uh, yeah, Cat in the Hat, they both are a mess. I think I saw the beginning of the Cat in the Hat, and there's you're you're going into the town. There's yeah. people's like it's it's a mess. It's like all the stuff that Zeus would have taken out of his book, mm, <laughs> like because go, they have to make it an yeah, hour and a half. I guess so. Yeah, but I mean, I'm yeah. sure you could have you could make that house, like everything that happens in that house, interesting for an hour or an hour and a half or whatever. See, I've thought, because I read that book a lot to my kid, mm. or I did, um, but he's over it. But, yeah. um, but there's, there is a lot in there. There's a lot of mm. adventure and mm. chasing each other around and he pulls out interesting things and like it's, you know, the mum's coming home and it's, yeah. yeah. I think it probably maybe what work would, be, I don't know if you've ever seen um, the woman who does, uh, what the fuck are they called? Like the Gruffalo. Yeah. That. The There's they like 30 those. minute animated mm. shorts that the, 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 uh, yeah. they're British. Um, no, know. but they're, they're really good. For, they are really good. But, and they're just like, and they're like the perfect length of time and they're, and they're beautiful and they capture the books really well. Mm. And, and they've actually added a little bit of stuff. Yes. Mostly through just the animation and the, you see, yep. you get character work from like the cat that's in there who's, you know, from the room on the broom or you get yeah. different things like that where you go, wow, you've really added something to this. And because the words would only go for a few minutes. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Just, yeah. Yeah. You're listening to dad talk. Dad's talking about <laughs> kids. <shows. laughs> but they're genuinely so good. Like those ones. Yeah. You go. And, and it's also, so a great thing to put on right before the end of the day because they're also super calm. Yeah, and it's exactly. That hypes the kid up. And it's I not think, a movie. That goes I think there are that. some Event books where you're like, <laughs> you read it and you're like, man, I'd love to see that. Yeah. You know, or you're like, oh, I wonder what was really going on with it. You know, there are like short ones where it's like, you know, do androids dream of electric sheep? Where you're like, yeah. well, there's not a lot here, but there's a lot that it, it opens up a whole world. It'd be yes. really interesting to see this fleshed out. With fleshed and blood people, Whoa. but yeah, 
Uh, <laughs> I thought you meant like the buildings then, and stuff would be made of meat. And like that. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So this is, this is the next level of Blade Runner where instead of making robots covering them in flesh, mm. now we're covering everything in flesh. That's We've right. gone flesh mad. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> flesh, you got a flesh fridge. Flesh, flesh toilet. Imagine that shit. Flesh is <laughs> right into flesh. I shan't imagine that. Oh. I'm I picturing imagine it. it. It's, got a, it's it. got a tongue and teeth. Like, I don't like it. It's, I don't like it. The tongue runs around the inside of the bowl. Oh it's a self cleaning mouth toilet. It's pretty good. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm like a Flintstones style television show where everything is a flesh nightmare. Yeah. Like a car. Like, Did you oh, think you have a crap job? Yeah. Is oh, this the toilet, toilet goes, with a tongue. Blah, it's a living. This is exactly what something Philip K. Dick would have written, though. So, <laughs> are sh- we better than him? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think it's safe to assume we are better than him. It's but, like the Cadbury ad where the world is made of chocolate and all the people are made oh, of chocolate. Oh, yeah, and they're and eating, everyone's eating everything. Yeah. I don't get it. It's weird. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Made me scared. Yeah. yeah. It's like that Eiffel 65 song where everything is blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> everything was blue. And the toilet's got a tongue and teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that video clip. Don't watch it I'm again. I'm blue. That's why he's blue. <laughs> but then there are some things where it feels like a very closed universe and especially things like Cat in the Hat where it's like this is so structured and so rhymed and it's like he said everything, everything. There's nothing. There's no nothing. Nowhere else for anything to fit in. Mm. Yeah. And yep, so yep. why would you try and then force a whole lot of stuff into there? Because of money. I get oh, it yeah. now. Yeah, I, in fact, right. in, I, and I'm yeah. going to. I'm going to make a live action adaptation of There Once Was a Man from Nantucket. <laughs> <laughs> You've inspired me. You're very welcome. You know what I think's got like a pretty good track record, but also there's some horrible work in here. Uh, the stuff that's so Stephen, mixed bag. Yeah, mixed bag. Mostly good, I'd say Stephen King, because you could do like Shawshank, The Shining, which he hated and remade in a in a worse way. He directed his own version of it in like of the, the 80s. Shining. Yeah, he made his own version. Is it a min- TV miniseries? I think it might be. Yeah. Oh. Um. Uh. Like it. There's multiple versions of that. The uh. The body, which is Stand by Me, yeah. is a Stephen King. Oh yeah. Uh, did I say Shawshank? I think I did. Yeah. Mm. So there's a lot of really good stuff there. That's Shane Warne's favorite movie. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Australian fast bowler Shane Warne, yes. Oh, well, yeah. From some, uh, yeah. Spin yes. bowler. Oh, sorry. I took a shot at it. <laughs> you could have just said bowler, but you uh, had no. to. You I had needed to... an extra syllable, all right? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's that's amazing. And it also brings reminds me of the fact that Stephen King has been around for so long and doesn't yeah. seem that old. No, he like, doesn't. how can you have written the book that The Shining was based on, <laughs> yeah. which was made. <laughs> 200 years ago <laughs> and still just be like a guy. Yeah, because yeah. I, I remember um, there's a recent interview with him where he was asked about because he was heavily criticised as like a schlock writer at the, yeah. the time and he was like, well, what do you what do you think about that now, your critics? And he's like, they're all dead. dead. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, he's, like, he's, just, he ne- he's never cared. You he's know just, what I think also helps him? He's got an unusual looking face, so it's hard to tell if he's ageing. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, yeah. He already looked a bit weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he's, his son's also very good as well. He's written a bunch of good comics and oh. yeah, stuff. Yeah, awesome. Just uh, is it Don King? It's Don King. Don King. <laughs> King yeah. <laughs> I was going to go Stephen Prince, but <laughs> <laughs> did you guys see the Doctor Sleep, the sequel to The Shining? No, it's very good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, do they do anything with Red Rum? Yes. Like, yeah. It's in a mirror or whatever, you know, probably. Oh, I can't yeah, remember. Yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't seen it. I enjoyed I enjoyed yeah. the first shining. Here's a spoiler, so skip ahead if you um if you want to watch it. There's a um. moment there's a moment where <laughs> some um some telepaths who can like some evil telepaths who turn up to like kill Ewan McGregor who's who's Danny. And so they turn up and they've all got mind powers and he just shoots them all with a gun. That's <laughs> where so he gets just him and another guy to start shooting them. And I'm like, yeah, this is cool. This. <laughs> and, and that is a fun idea when they do take someone else's, like, you know, it's like someone else's book or something, but then, which I guess was made into a movie, and then just give it to the to completely different writers who yeah. are making something, like expanding the somebody else's universe, I find. Is yes. quite a fun and interesting thing. Like I, I thought that the, the, of the Blade Runner sequel was really mm. that was a really good yeah good example of yeah, that. Absolutely, mm. yeah. Really interesting books, you know. Um, question yeah. about Silence of the Lambs. Anybody read that? No, no. I no? have not. No? 
Let's move on. Um, I, can, I, can, I talk, can I talk about one? Yeah, definitely. Sorry. Master and Commander, the far side of the world. Recently came up on Twitter. Oh. Yeah. Russell Crowe was like. Oh, that's right. He got into <laughs> beef with someone. Everyone was like, look at him going off at this person. I was like, this seems like just quite a well-reasoned defense of his film. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. Said, he, somebody said it was, wasn't as good as it could have been. He said, I think it is. And that seems like actually, <laughs> as far as interactions go on the internet, I was like, that's r- extremely mundane. Russell yeah. Crowe throws a, a virtual telephone <laughs> concierge of criticism. <laughs> ah, this COVID time that we're in. That's right. <laughs> he has to use his... Anyway, um, yeah, I, I read the, both the book uh, and the, watched the movie. It's a series, and, yes. Yeah, mm. huge series where yeah. there's lots of them. And I would love it if they made more movies, yeah. but they're not going to. No. Even though the uh, the... The cap, the sea captain in the in the series is quite a large gentleman, is and he? Russell Crowe is now yeah. as well. So he, that would he, save he money can do on whatever, production. He fluctuates, so he, yeah. he can, mm. whatever you want him to be, he'll mm. do it. But he, uh, but yeah, uh, really great series, yeah. and uh, I enjoyed the film a lot. Like you know, the series, the books are quite long, a little bit boring, and the movie was like quite long, but a bit more exciting. And you're like, yeah. great. I remember thinking it was okay. Yeah. But that's all I remember about. I'll take that. It's one of those ones where I, I think I kind of half watched it and I was like, oh, this looks, seem, kind of seems boring. But then it's a, recently, it's got a bit British vibes. Yeah. Oh, but okay. then recently, I think, well, they, they think they sailed from Britain. You know, yeah. Maybe from yeah, uh, okay, Britain. Yeah. It's poison the well for yeah. you. Right? Yeah. yeah. But I think it's one that recently I've heard so many people say that they thought it was a really good movie. I got to go back. That yeah. I've really been wanting to go back and see that one. Mm. Um, another film, which I haven't read the book, but Andy has. Okay. Um, and, but I love the movie. It's like basically my favorite movie, which is No Country for Old Men. Yeah. Whatever the, the Coen brothers. It's so weird that like I find some stuff boring, but this things that are just like big sort of apocalyptic expanses of, of Texan of sort yes. of Texan desert. And uh, sort of like you know, long panning shots and just sadness and eco- economic depravity and things like that. It's Something very un-British the movie as well, isn't it? I guess but if I had it's to the cate- categorize, it. I guess yeah. Brit- 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 Britain is wet. Yeah, uh, you know, this is very dry. Yeah. I mean, it was weird that Stephen Fry had that big monologue in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's that, but there's there's that weird thing at the end where it's like um, Llewellyn's wife's mom is in the car and she goes, "I got the cancer," and you go, "I don't know who this character is." <laughs> she's, she's a bit over the top for this whole thing, but but uh, everything else was was great. It's phenomenal. I was actually talking about that just today with friends. So just the, like, I got the I'm, cancer. That, not that part okay. in particular. <laughs> I'm actually just saying that in the group chat. So yeah. if anybody remembers, but uh, yeah, it is. Is phenomenal, but what about the book? I have not. Read I it. haven't read it. I don't know where oh, Alistair uh, got you said that. that I... To me, like you said, you said, oh, the Cormac McCarthy book that was really good. Wow, was this the that. end of Alan what Andy? You, what, it might be. what are you talking about? I think we spoke yesterday. I said we what should go. You, you, yeah, talked to, you talked to somebody else. Wow, about that, this. Maybe I, maybe that happened in my dream. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, like I have a memory of you going, yeah, I read that book. It was like, yeah, it's like a lot, a lot of the stuff was in there. I mean, when you started talking, I was like, maybe I have read that book, and you almost convinced me. But I have, I have absolutely not read that book. Somebody's gaslighting somebody, <laughs> and we're going to get to the bottom of it. Andy, I thought you were a yes and guy. Yeah. And here you are, just throwing Al under the bus by saying oh, no. Well, I haven't oh, read that yeah. book. Well, in a book adaptation uh, anecdote uh, based on the Cohen brothers i think that the uh oh brother where art thou was based off of the the odyssey, the odyssey. Oh, okay. but i think yeah. i think i heard that they based it off the odyssey but they hadn't read the odyssey <laughs> yeah. oh, that's great i love that Which, yeah you know I, I i like that a lot as well that's how i would go about making, yeah 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 and making an adaptation and be like i, I get the gist yeah because <laughs> i i you know like if you see like the behind the scenes stuff of lord of the rings it's just like peter jackson like constantly thumbing through the oh my you know God. just just to make sure he can get as much detail in as possible and they're just like yeah fuck i don't know like i, I, I skimmed it i think yeah <laughs> what would you if you were basing a, a movie on a book what parts of the book would you get somebody to sort of describe it to you, or would you just look at the cover and go, "Ah, oh, there's a master and a commander"? And I tell you what, I, 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 I can absolutely guarantee to you what I would do. I would go to the Wikipedia synopsis, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. and sure. I would go to plot, and I would read that, and I would get whatever version some lunatic has yeah. gone into <laughs> detail about, and then that mm. would become the film. You could just um, sometimes word you, for sometimes word. Sometimes you look at a Wikipedia plot summary and it says this plot description is too excessive, too long, and excessively detailed. Yeah, just get the first couple of paragraphs and go. Yep, that'll 
That'll do it. You're exactly right, yeah. But I probably wouldn't adapt that one. If it said excessively detailed, I'd be like, oh, there's going to be a bit of work. If I saw one that said, this one lacks detail and needs citation, I'd be like, okay, we're going to have some fun <laughs> with this. One. I can really flesh out the world yeah. now. That's right, exactly. Oh, very exciting. Um, I'd also like to mention uh, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. Yeah, where are you at on that? Hate it. Yeah. So once yeah. again, it's one where I had a really, really bad time, and I couldn't even like I, c- I couldn't get more than one. Was episode it the in. characterization? Was characterization, it the, I despised the wit, uh, the what lack what of it. The wit? Yes, I, I also found that to be lacking. I, yeah. A lot of people really liked it again as well, but. Um, yeah, I'm talking about the uh, the Douglas Adams. Netflix, the Netflix yeah, remake Netflix of yes. the Douglas With Adams With Elijah book. Wood is in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, and I just I was uh, that was one where I watched it. and I was like, why you, this this has got nothing to do with. Dirk Gently, Solicitor yeah. Detective Agency, the book, why have you, like, if you want to make something else, that's fine. You just make something else. It's okay. You can make the thing you want to make. Just don't call it the name of this thing. And that mm. way it means that somebody else can still make the thing. Yeah, exactly. I think that's uh, yeah, th- that's really annoying when somebody ruins a property mm. or even just does an okay job. Right, because like, well, now we've got to yeah. wait a long time yeah. before another one comes along. There was a Dirk Gently, Holistic. Detective Agency series, a BBC one, a British one. You would have loved it, Alastair. With Steve, uh, <laughs> You've perked up over here. Like, <laughs> what was his name? Somebody or other, Moffat. Uh, Stephen Moffat? The he's Doctor he's the writer, one? right? But yeah. there's, a, there's an actor whose surname is Moffat as oh, well. Oh, okay. Um, who was also in episodes with uh, the guy from Friends, oh. Joey from Friends. Anyway. Little yeah, Miss Moffat. I liked that a lot. Yeah, okay, right. Interesting. Okay, and that was that like It a, wasn't that interesting, was, no, but no, no, it is because <laughs> I think though no, because... Well, well, but no, it, it isn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how dare you say that about my statement? No, but like I can, um, I, I'm picturing like an early 90s BBC comedy and it's, and it's like you need a pretty decent budget to make that work and it was still better than what they managed to uh, do it, on I think it, I think it was sort of 2000s. It wasn't that... That oh, okay. long before the 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 remake, but they only got one season of like a, just a couple of episodes. Yeah, that's actually and, not that interesting. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, I feel I should, I, we should round it out. Uh, what do you think of the movie adaptation of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the oh, Galaxy? Yeah. I did not enjoy. Interesting. That. What about the the TV version from like the eighties? I know I haven't seen that, ah, but that one. Crazy. I mm. wonder was that even written before the book was? Because the, there was a radio show. Yes, and the radio show. M- was turned into a book, but I'm not sure if it was turned into the TV series even before it became the book. Oh. So, mm, wow. yes. Well, there's um, no way to find here's, out. Now, here's no. the <laughs> most <laughs> obscure deep cut on the, in, in all of this. Here's an adaptation of, of a comedy thing I really did like. It was a, sh- a, a book called Wilt by an author called Tom Sharp who writes these really absurd, like, disgusting kind of books where just like awful, <laughs> awful, everything goes wrong for the main character over and over again and it's gross and just like, yeah, it's very funny but it's just like it's filthy. Oh. And uh, they made a series. They turned it into Mr Bean. <laughs> <laughs> they took a lot of the weird sex yeah. out but it's implied. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a turkey on his head. Yeah. Yeah. He's a very <laughs> sexual man. Yeah. He's got that energy, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, man, that's a pitch you could do. It's Mr Bean but he's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Bone, I guess. Yes. No. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but but they made there was just like a like just like a telly movie version the, that they made of that. Called Wilt? Uh, called Wilt. Or the misadventures of Mr. Wilt. Yeah. Was, yeah, 89. Huh. With Griff Reese Jones and uh Mel Smith. And huh. I think it's really good. I've never it's heard just, of anybody it's, who's it's, it's ever local. done no. anything in this. No. Yeah. I only know about it because I got a VHS of it of a friend of my dad. And watch it. So I mean, if you want to, if you want to watch it, get in Lost. touch with Phil the Worthy. I can send you his address. I can show you where he buried it in the woods. And that's where we would all go. He that's said cool. I was never to tell anybody of this. Uh, incredible. Mm, there uh, you go. Do you? Are you guys? Uh, where? Where are you on order? Ever the time machine? Which has multiple adaptations. Yeah, and the one the that I've machine. seen is the Guy Pearce one, oh. which I know is not good, but I'm kind of fond of as like a schlocky. Yeah, I think awesome. it's also a beautifully. Uh, no, I really like the Time Machine itself. Like in that, like the way that I don't know if you remember it. It's all like glass and brass and. Mm. and all well, that. I, I've, yeah. I've seen the the original yeah. movie version where it's yeah, you know, it's like this sort of weird bike. <laughs> <laughs> a weird Behold, sort of stationary bicycle. <laughs> it was the early days of the bike. People thought it had more potential than it really did. Imagine if you could cycle through time. <laughs> I bet there was something. Yeah, 
But that's okay though with that movie, isn't it? I, mean, uh, I think people are considered a classic. Yeah. 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 I, I thought it was good. I found it quite scary. Yeah. yeah I find go. a lot of things quite scary. <laughs> it seems though. that way, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, it's just hard to know. I mean, I just love um, any time travel stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like every time you go, oh, there's a chance that they're going to see each other again. Oh, I'll get to see me again. <laughs> It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> you know, you go, it's just like your mind, your mind is always engaged because you're like, oh, this is cool. This is going to go now. They're going to go here. We're going to see that thing. And then gonna, now they can, maybe we can change it. Or yeah. So oh, you're, you're not caught up on like. As a, <laughs> I would, I would, I would, look, just to just sign that, I would love to watch a time travel movie with, with Al and he's just sitting there going, Oh, maybe they maybe they'll, maybe they'll, maybe they'll oh, oh, we're going to go over here now. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. we'll because release I mean, that as a director's commentary. Yeah, there's so many, there's so many places. Like a lot of time, they go like, oh, we'll just go back to what, right before this thing happened. You go, you can go back twenty years, you can go back twenty years and fix it by just you know, whispering that. Yeah, like that. Are you caught up though? Because you've got a quite an analytical, scientific mind. Mm. Both of you, you share it. Do we you, do. That, yeah, it's um, in a jar at home. Yeah, does that, would that affect your enjoyment? You're like, well, that no, because he can't go back in time because the reason for him going back in time was mm. uh, if he stops himself, then it's not good. Like, do you get caught up on any of that? I think. I think if there's if there's like glaring kind of like what yeah. feels like mistakes or whatever. But I think I think say, if the movie m- pretends like it's really clever. Yeah. Right, that, like yeah. makes a big deal of like we've worked out all the details mm. and like act takes itself seriously. That's going to be a problem so because you'll be like, well, no, this doesn't actually make sense. I haven't seen it, but yes, I understand. But then you watch Back to the Future and you're like, I couldn't give a shit no, how this works. It doesn't matter. <laughs> this yeah. is just fun. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've I s- want it to work. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen, uh, and you, if you haven't, just say you have uh, Avengers Endgame. Um, yeah, <laughs> I have. Yes, yeah, I have. Yeah, we've all seen it. <laughs> yeah, it's about because I think. Yep, they- I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Uh, oh, no. They, they, they know how, how nitpicky like fans are, and that like the biggest movies in the mm. world. So there are scenes where they just pull a handbrake and explain time travel and why it's not the Back to the Future time travel, mm. and then yeah, and, then, and how it's actually a parallel reality, and it's actually a whatever, and yeah. But they did a pretty good job. Yeah, I think so. They like they thought it through. They made the effort to like put some. Reverse engineer the logic that they needed. You know, you can make mm. these things work in a very limited little scope in which you've like you've ticked all your boxes, and they did that. I yeah, think. yeah, cool. So we all agree that the biggest movie of all time was pretty, pretty good. It was, it was oh, pretty man. <laughs> for time travel at least. I yeah. should say yeah. coherent, coherent. Yeah, yeah. Mm. gotcha. I yeah. know. Oh, I love that movie. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> Endgame. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that the one? That's the one at the end, or is that the second last one? <laughs> Inf- well, I always think I thought of Infinity War. I was like, is, that, oh, is Infinity War the last one? But it's the second last one, right? Yes. No, no. That yeah. Sorry. Well, I guess it is the second last. He movie. hasn't seen it either. No, no. <laughs> Guys, he's got the Wikipedia table. page open right now. No, Show of hands if you haven't seen <laughs> Avengers Endgame. Three, two, one. Listen back to some of the episodes about this and see if James ever accidentally says "citation needed" while he's <laughs> yeah. reading from the page. <laughs> what I was like, because technically the last one was a Spider-Man movie, so that. But I was going to get into it, but it doesn't really matter, does it? <gasps> doesn't matter at all. You got The Martian. Um, I've read the book and I've watched the movie. Did you the read book. the book first? I did. Huh, sometimes Because the movie was coming out. Yeah, sometimes out. I'll hear of movies coming out and I'm like, I'll oh, get on that. And Like I'm going to read The Dry, which is Eric Banner's new, mm. new movie. Yeah, I've heard good things. Yeah, um, I heard it's not great. I heard oh. from someone that's like, oh, no, it's just like an okay Australian movie. And, yeah, right. Yeah. I, I, hey, an okay Australian <laughs> yeah. movie. That sounds great. We're doing really good. <laughs> I didn't realise we had okay, okay ones now. <laughs> we did it, guys. We did it. We can all be proud. We made I think okay we should one. probably stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, I thought The Martian uh, was good and the movie was good and they're both good mm. and that's good. Don't you guys think? Well, yes. I mean, <laughs> look, I mean, I did read an article where a guy was like, actually, there's something in the soil that wouldn't allow you to grow potatoes and it would kill you <laughs> once you ate those potatoes. Well, I hope someone killed that <laughs> Yeah, man. and then uh, obviously I got the joy from seeing that guy die. <laughs> um, and so I, that's why I enjoyed The Martian yeah. so much. I got a time travel question. Yeah, uh, I've read The Time Traveler's Wife. And I think it's a genuinely wonderful and heartwarming and lovely book. And the movie's Eric Banner again. Yeah. It's just like whatever. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I always confuse that one with the man who mistook his wife for a hat. <laughs> So, Any book with a wife in it. <laughs> Any book with a wife for me is a, w- a wife thinking that her husband is a hat. And so that's why I couldn't enjoy that movie as much because I was like, why is this hat keep going through this fourth dimension? <laughs> you are going to love this. I thought I heard this the other day. The Time Traveler's Wife is getting adapted into a series with Stephen Moffat. 
<gasps> so uh, British Stephen Moffat. Oh, yeah, you kind of. You but it does say it. HBO, so maybe it's. Oh, uh, you know they're doing a lot he of did, stuff with HBO and BBC these days. He a did lot Dracula. Of, uh, yeah. Recently. Was it? Was that good? No, I saw. No, I saw. No, I saw the no. billboard. Very bad. <laughs> it's quite bad. <laughs> I no, it was initially I, good, and then it takes like a weird turn. I reckon Stephen Moffat's got to take a break. I think he's just got to <laughs> t- time gonna, out or a break. I think he's going to. I think he's got to take time out for like five years and just okay. not make anything for a while because mm. I think he's a bit wrung thin. Yeah, he might he's be been right. doing too much stuff. There's a lot of content out there, and I just think his ideas, the attention that he's able to give to things, is not adequate. Except, for, <laughs> except for Jekyll, which you enjoyed, correct? I haven't seen Jekyll. Yeah, you're okay. You're all right. Yeah. <laughs> you're okay. I saw the jackal though. Oh yeah, Bruce Willis. Yeah, and there's another one. But, yeah, uh, I've only seen the Bruce. I love Willis that. One. I love. I love the ideas. The jackal. That's the one where he goes like he's like a spy killer kind yeah, of yeah. guy. Mm. And then, but then they, there's all these places where spies just hang out. and They don't kill each other. Yeah, uh, and there was there was a big scene where he was he was spray painting a van. I liked that. That's right. He, yeah. uh, he, he miniguns Jack Black. I think at one point he does. Oh, yeah, man, that's yeah. good. Yeah, and Jack would have been like. Ring-a-go, ring-a-go, ring-a-go. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been like yeah. that. Uh, he's like that. He's like that. He's like I, that. I've, uh, I, we should probably wrap it up, I guess, yeah. at some point. But um, <laughs> I don't think we covered it. <laughs> that was pretty comprehensive. I think so. This is Cloud most Atlas also didn't like the film. Yeah, I, I haven't tried it. I've heard mm. it's pretty ambitious, considering that that book is like... For sure. Yeah. But like then they, they, they put some stuff in there of like... Like that whole thing where... I don't know if you know that there's the same actors played different characters at different that. times. That's like not in the book in any way. <laughs> so what do you think that is though? Why did they I mean, do it's, that? I it, mean, it, it, it sort of implies some kind of a meaning. Like a reincarnation or yeah, like a but like, a, or... It's like what? It's not really clear what it does imply, but I whatever thought... it implies is very big and that's a big There's... imaginary implication I mean, to put you, into the book. If you put it through the filter of like, a trans person, which I think the Wachowskis are. Is it they made that movie? Yes, yes that's right. Um, yeah, yeah. It feels like it's like one of those, like the person who you are on the inside is maybe different to the person. There we go. Um, you know, like so, so as in like, like the same person could be in many, many different, different types things. of yes. bodies, maybe over, you know, in whatever the dimensions or whatever they do in that movie. I don't know. That's that's yeah. the limits of my interpretation of yeah. this thing. Or you make Hugo Weaving Asian through our Exactly. <laughs> or maybe <laughs> what if Hugo Weaving was from... You know, a different continent. What if he was? What if he was? <laughs> Can I have a billion dollars? We're going to make a movie. <laughs> yeah. So uh, last one I've got here is, that, well, I've got others, but like Lord of the Flies. And then, then Hugo Weaving gets a phone call from one of the Wachowskis who's like, look, i got a billion dollars and so you have to go with me on this. <laughs> I'm going to turn you into a penguin. There's, there's one condition. Sorry, Hugo. You, you, I don't get the billion dollars unless we turn you into a penguin. So. Wait, also, just out of curious, didn't you watch Cloud Atlas and then go, I'm going to write a, a comedy festival show that's better than this. It's like, yeah. that, that does this idea better. And he just wrote an idea that was like, look, this is what Cloud Atlas was trying to do. <laughs> and he called it string theory. And, and it was pretty, it was very good. Really? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, uh, I didn't realize that that was, yeah, that's I awesome. was nominated for an award. Yeah, just quiet. That's great. That's amazing. <laughs> because you saw Cloud Atlas. I saw Cloud Atlas and I was like, I mean, this is just a bunch of separate stories that implies that they're all connected. Right. But with no, with no, giving no details or information yeah, yeah. about how that could be case. The case, if that's all it takes, I'll just do that. <laughs> yeah. And I wrote a bunch of stories. Then I wrote some really transparent bullshit to make it seem like they were connected. They had nothing to do with each other. But you got an award. That's, well, nominated. Nomination. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the real award for me. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I like how I got more excited. I'm going <laughs> oh to start my. an award series show. <laughs> called the nommies and it's <laughs> it's all just nominations i love it <laughs> i um i read this as a as a teen man and then i've seen both adaptations but though there might be more lord of the flies there's like a mm. black and white 50s mm. movie i want to say and yeah, there's a yeah. late 80s version uh which i don't think as, is as good but they're pretty solid all around Did they I eat think. that little kid with glasses they, they eat him. Yeah. And I think they just hit him with a rock. Ah. Uh, and they left him. <laughs> feels a big waste. Feels like, yeah, it feels like a waste of meat. Sounds <laughs> like that's what you do before you shuck an oyster. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, is, is that, that, that has, any, has anyone read the read those or seen those? Or I don't recall. No. I may have. I mean, I saw the Simpsons episode based off oh, yeah, of it, okay. which yeah, I think got is it, pretty close. No, that's and, all you uh, need. Yeah. I'm really sorry about the... Uh, 
I mean, it, like about my, you know, my reading. Uh, I've you know, eaten breath. a lot of the fries. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's I think we all have. Yeah. Do you get mayo or are you, because I'm kind of against that. You get a boy who's been hit in the head with a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Wrapped up in a. Yeah. I think that's why code. the tomato yeah. sauce there is free because it's little boy blood <laughs> oh. and vinegar. <laughs> Just to give it that acidity. Yeah, mm. Terrific stuff. All right. Well, thank you for stopping by. Oh, has anyone else got another thing that they read and watched? I, I've got a few other things, but it's just going to be more obscure shit. That's oh, fine. I, I think that's no, good. Do give us one more. Have you read any of the series, Shane Maloney's series about uh, Whelan, Murray Whelan series? It's, they're all set in Melbourne. I'm right. A, I've heard of they're, David Wenham. David Wenham. Yeah, played okay. him in the adaptation, which was directed by Sam Neill and John Clark. Oh, uh, yeah, and produced by them, and they both appear in it. And it's uh, yeah, they, they made three for the ABC, and then they didn't make any more. Yeah. I bought them on DVD. Has oh that got like goodness. a rake vibe? Mm. Mm, not. Uh, I haven't watched enough rake to to categorically rule that out. But like the books are, are very funny. They're very like Melbourne, you know, um, coffee culture. <laughs> not, no, no, it's, a, it's a little bit pre, it's a little Festival. bit pre yeah. lunar pre park. gentrification Lumba. Melbourne, you know. But yeah. like, it's mm. it's you know, there's 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 a bunch of books Foot's in great. the series. They're all they're all great. I I recommend checking them out. Shane Maloney, uh, Murray Whelan series, and then the adaptation. Right? I was really happy with, okay. and I was like, I would love to see more of this. And then for some reason, they didn't make any more. And now John Clark is dead. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Probably because they didn't make any more. I want that on the record. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a pretty good. That's a good group of people to get together to it's, make it's that. A, though, it's yeah. an amazing yeah. cast. People, yeah, it's it's, it's, a, it's dream, dream. I think having Wenham as that character is dream casting. You've got a Wenham vibe. I can see that as well. <laughs> Would you be the new Murray Whelan? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Wenham's too big for Murray Whelan these days. Is he? He was in Three Hundred. You see his in two thousand and nine. Mm. Oh, yeah. you mean I thought you meant like as a star, mm. and both. Like he's beyond it. Yep. Okay, fair enough. Um, just out of curiosity, if uh, you know, before we end this, do you guys have any dream books that you would like to see turn into oh, movies? My goodness, I should have thought about this and question. I didn't. I mean, I could start if you guys wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I feel like you um, asked the question yeah, solely yeah. so you um, could tell. Me well, well, I mean, like I don't even know if anybody could could make this uh, in like well. But the book that it took me seven years to read, even though it was my favorite book, and I think it took me, I, I was still reading it for about three years while saying that it was had taken me seven years. So it probably took me about 10 years. <laughs> um, but it was a book by Don DeLillo or Don DeLillo uh, called White Noise. And it's kind of a book that feels like not much happens. It's a guy, he's like a, he's a, an academic of, of, of the head of uh, Hitler studies at some university. and And it's mostly like, you know, it's like mostly like a family thing where like it's already funny. <laughs> you know, he's he's got kids from a previous marriage. His wife's called Babette. She's got kids from a previous marriage, and it's all just people talking very confidently yeah. about their beliefs, right? And then and then you know he starts going to a German teacher, which is just some guy in some dorm, and he, he the guy makes him stare directly in his mouth, and they're just having conversations. <laughs> All the time was like his you know, like a, his his only friend in this thing seems to be another academic who's an academic in pop culture and they talk about like the meaning of cereal boxes and the meaning of like you know the trays at the underneath meat in, in yeah, supermarkets right. and things like that. Anyway, but then somewhere in there there is some plot where it's like there's there's a huge gas leak in the city uh, in the town that they live in and then some people you know they they have to get evacuated. Some people are freaking out that it's not being televised. It's kind of like it's like it's making fun of America. Uh, but in a got him finally, yeah, yeah. And, it's, I, and then and then at the end there kind of is some plot. Okay, yeah, that sounds a bit like um like an Ian McEwan kind of like yeah. like meandering about and talking to people and looking in mouths and yeah, yeah, yeah looking yeah. at a lot of looking at mouths. Yeah, <laughs> and there's just this kind of this thing where him and his wife have this kind of uh, contest between each other on who fears death the most. <laughs> oh wow! Right, and they realize that she's taking some medication and they they can't figure out where it's coming from and. Yeah, and that's kind of the, where where the plot sort of actually come, comes this, from. This book is only three hundred twenty six pages. Man, just uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> but it's because I was loving it so much. I would love it, and I would read. I would read two three pages, and I go, "Man, this is so good." Hot damn! And then I'd put it down again <laughs> for another seven months, and then I'd pick it up again and go, "Man, I love this." He's, he's looking at he's this like a so snake. Hard. Gorging on an entire baby donkey, mm. and then he just lies there digesting it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Terrific. Oh, that sounds good. Should yeah. I read it? Yes. Uh, I really enjoyed it. You I have made 10 me years laugh. to spare, James? Mm -hmm. uh, probably it not. It made me laugh a lot, even though there's no jokes in it. And even 
maybe there's like one or two <laughs> jokes in it. And those kind of like, they kind of stick out a little bit. Okay, gotcha, like, yeah. yeah. But it made me laugh a lot. Terrific. Yeah. I don't have a, an example. Yeah. I wish I did. Oh. Anybody else got one of the things that they're like, I like this. And I mean, you know, all, all, my, all my things would be like Douglas Adams books or Terry Pratchett yeah. books and I would just want a really good adaptation that's exactly I think, what I want it to be I and think, it's never yeah. going to happen. I, th- I, th- yeah, I think you guys would be good at adapting something like that. Maybe we'll try. Yeah. Maybe we'll try. <laughs> if you're allowed to. I, I actually, once upon a time, did a dream casting of uh, a Terry Pratchett book. What's it look like? I wanted David Wenham to play Rincewind. Mm. I don't know. I think he's he'd the be wizard. really funny. Okay. He's the wizard. <laughs> I just David think he's Wenham got in a big robe of, with stars yeah, on it. I can picture that. Such a weird, like, loser vibe to him <laughs> that he can do so well. And I, th- I think it would be perfect. Also, he's got red hair. He does. Which... Uh, Works. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Seems no, perfect. That's yeah. the two 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 boxes. Yeah, no, I think so. Definitely. Well, yeah. Thanks for coming on, guys. I really mm-hmm. appreciate. We really appreciate it. But don't we, Mason? Both of us. Yes. Yeah. Good. And uh, we appreciate it also. I want you to know that. Oh, both no, of us. We mm. we're happy that you could be here and do this. It's fun and we like it. <laughs> so we, Mason. And it was. He's I think, reading that from Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it was worth it just for the trampoline and. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> So the pop test, it's linked below. Thank uh, you. It's an ABC uh, funded pro- and, and a hosted podcast, correct? Do you yeah. explain where the funding comes from for all of your We do. Guests no, we often projects. do. We just want to. We just want, no, I, just, I, I was trying to give it like an air of legitimacy. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Thank you very so much. So somebody said, no. these guys have got it. Hot stuff. Yeah, mm. we've made it. Yeah. We're in the big leagues now, baby. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, you want to check it out? Uh, we like it. There will be 10 episodes mm. coming out for the next Eight weeks. Oh, wow. Terrific. Yeah. Yes. And I bet you if lots of people listen, there could be a second season. You know <laughs> of what? Of the podcast. Yeah. You of don't even podcast. need to listen. If a lot of people download it <laughs> yeah. on all of their devices, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this could this could really, you if know, we could get made into a movie. <laughs> <laughs> download the episodes many times. I guess if somebody would do that, I suppose. You could. Hired a sort of a, you know. That troll farm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You Download can download do- all of this and then also put negative reviews on every other podcast. <laughs> I suppose. I suppose that'd be cool. That would be. Co- and you, they, you could. People could tweet at the ABC as well, I guess, and be like, "This is good and more of this, please." I'd imagine. I'll kill you if you don't produce another season. I know that's, where that's the you wording. Are. Get that wording yeah, down. Yeah. That's what we want to hear. <laughs> yeah. Terrific stuff. All right, do you guys want to sit, stand around, stay around for the next segment of what we're reading? What yes, are we gonna I read? do. Terrific. I will play the theme song. We've got a segment. It's called "What We Read and What We Gonna Read." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, nice. It's yeah. very vague. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to be reading anything. It's essentially this what we just did, but a different thing. Yeah. So <laughs> something that might never be adapted into can a I, TV series. Can I sing the along? Of course. Oh, you won't be able to hear it, oh. but uh, you definitely can. <laughs> do you want to put the headphones on? You should. You should. <laughs> All right, I'm getting it ready. I'm lining it up. <laughs> It's exciting. I'm doing the theme. Westworld today. He's done it. He's That's done a it. dream for me as a fan of the show. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. So, uh, yeah, anybody, uh, what do what you, what have we got? What are we doing? I mean, if it wasn't enough that you've watched one to three episodes of The Watch. <laughs> Absolutely consuming it all. Um, it is so. It's just so hard with with. Ch- I don't know if you know this, but yeah. with children, it's very difficult it to consume is media. Literally, my job. Yeah, and it is fucking impossible. Yeah. So I don't know how anybody so you gave up. You yeah, gave up I, months ago. I didn't see Endgame. You, you were just right. Got the Wikipedia page <laughs> open. But like, yeah, I, I, you just can't. And I don't know how anybody who doesn't mm. have this job watches mm. anything. Quite yeah. frankly, it yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, uh, what I have been re- reading recently is I uh, I bought I bought again a, a copy of Sean McAuliffe's Smithereens, oh, yes. oh. which is uh, a book of short essays and comic writings by Australian comedian Sean McAuliffe. He's incredible, man. He's very good. What a prolific. Very, very good. He also consist- appears on the pop test. Oh. And, <laughs> and, and I'll this- kill him yeah. if they oh. don't produce a second season of the it, pop test. It takes so. an incredible... Uh, mm. Commitment and ability to remain at the top of your game for yeah. a long time. He's been around, yeah, because I, yeah, because it was well, I first remember from Full Frontal mm. when I was in primary yeah. school. Mm. And to, to maintain it, it, to stay at the top of your game, and also not to have outside interference mm. get yeah. take you off the top of your game. Yeah, and like being like, could you make it? Different in a way that we like, but isn't as funny. Yeah. Please do that. <laughs> He's had to do that for 20 years. He's yeah. had to be like, no, I'd rather do it. I guess it's strength. Requires, yeah. what is I'm calling it? It's yeah. strength. Yeah. It's inner strength. It's anyway. genuinely like you have to actually be just willing to go, no. 
Yeah. yeah. No, and he really is. Like, he, like I, I've definitely seen it, but it's like definitely like, no, you can't change this. <laughs> and they're like, uh, uh, all right. Yeah. Is that, <laughs> yeah. That that's like genuinely yeah. like, it's like, oh, you go, oh, that's what you got to do. Whereas uh, I, th- I would imagine myself in a scenario, I'd go, you, oh, you think yeah. it would be better like that? You think it'd be better if it was less funny? And I'd yeah. just be a little bit like, is that what you think? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> that really what you think? I'd take a stab at him, but then mm. I'd, I'd, let, I'd let them ruin but my I work. But I think it might be because he, <laughs> I was thinking it might be because he has serious business hair. Ah, he's got, yeah, yeah. He's got, yes. Whereas you two have ridiculous hair. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> ridiculous party hair. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. No, is your your hair is pretty business? Thank yeah, you. yeah. And so, yeah. do you think that you you wouldn't compromise? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you agreed with me though. <laughs> I think my my hairstyle is actually called the pushover. <laughs> um, uh, and nice man yeah, though, also yeah, right? Because you guys have obviously worked lovely, with him. Lovely gentleman. Yes, before, we do work, yeah. work with him. We're very yeah. fortunate too. Yeah. But um, yeah, I I, I I genuinely love his voice. So I, I rebought this book that I'd had a long time ago and then lost my copy of, mm. and I'm rereading it, and I'm lying in bed. Stifling laughter <laughs> yeah. and uh, annoying my wife. Laughter in the house. <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. yeah. <laughs> no, she says it's adorable when I try not to laugh. Okay, but sure. it's it's you know it's, you don't get a lot of books where you genuinely laugh out loud. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah, yeah, it's real good stuff. And it's nice that he's nice. It's nice to hear that. You oh, know what I mean? Very nice. Because everybody's just the worst. A lot of people are bad. A lot of people are bad. And a lot of people who become successful, you go, oh, the, well, that's what, how you get successful is you just yeah, you just be awful. the worst person. Yeah, you be yeah. the worst person. You just you step on everybody on the way up yeah, and then why? on the way down. I don't understand. <laughs> why do people want to work with someone like that? You go, yeah, he was really bad to us. We should get a second season with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> we should, should get that up. <laughs> Um, I, I bought, uh, this is unrelated a lot to what we were saying, but the King Kong video game from 2005 based off the Peter Jackson movie because we might cover it for a video. Yeah. Where you basically, there's, there's two modes of play. I don't know if you guys are video gamers. Sure. But one is where you're on the island and you're a man and you're trying to survive and you've got like a stick and you've got, a, and you've got like a gun with four bullets or whatever or you're just King Kong like smashing dinosaurs. <laughs> wow. So it just cuts between those two things and that's the game apparently. That's, that's fun. That sounds awesome, actually. Apparently, it's pretty. Yeah. It was pretty inventive for the time. It yeah. sounds like a, an experience of manic depression, <laughs> <laughs> like a, a manic depression simulator. Yeah, <laughs> there are two creatures within you: a depressed man <laughs> yeah. with a stick and King Kong. <laughs> Which one grows strongest? The one you feed, King Kong. That, he that, was. He is definitely the strongest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you put the yeah. Um, Definitely. Have that we discussed w- the fact that it definitely wasn't Beauty that killed the Beast? It, oh, it was the plane. Behind yeah. <laughs> the, the fall, I guess. It was the planes and the fall. <laughs> it's like gravity, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, that movie, King Kong, had one of the scariest things in it. I don't know why I found... Jack Black. Jack... <laughs> 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 was it the leech things? It was the- just... It was, yeah, it was oh, the that, giant yeah, bugs. I, I, think, I think it's like bugs... Are the only thing, the only redeeming feature they have is that they're small. Yeah. Because they seem like they don't have any personality or soul and they don't <laughs> care about you in any way. And they're not scared All themselves. Enough. Yeah. And so it just feels they're like relentless. Once, once they're huge, it's like it's like living robots that yeah. you want to kill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you touch them? Like oh. if you're trying to kill them, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're yeah, covered in armor and yeah. slime. I'd kill you, but I don't want to touch you. <laughs> yeah. <that's right. laughs> On your way. That's the thing you ever said to me. <laughs> Yeah, gross. Is there something about they can't get to a certain size though because of um, something to do with the way they're built? I think it's to do with the way that they get oxygen. Yeah, so okay, they don't yeah, have so lungs. I was going to say that, but then I was yeah. like, that's dumb. You don't know what no, you're saying, no, no, James. No, no, no. They, they, absorb, <laughs> they absorb oxygen through little holes in their skin and that's mm. actually why you can kill them with spray because it actually oh. just blocks up the holes, I think, and they just suffocate. So you could spray them with anything? Uh not oxygen. Yes, pure oxygen. <laughs> that, that makes them strong. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but, you know, they, you get to a certain size, your surface area to volume ratio mm. goes down, you can't absorb enough oxygen to survive. That's why during the time of the dinosaurs there were much bigger bugs. You see those huge um, dragonflies and stuff. There was a higher oxygen content in the yeah. atmosphere. Cool. And this is the kind of stuff you'll get on the pop test. <laughs> um, is it? I think, well, it is just us explaining scientific things that cool. we've done a bunch of research I was going to say, because you were just like, pa-pow. Bam, pa-pam, pa-pam. Yeah. 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 Those are all over that. I'm, I'm sort of the dumber guy in the, on the <laughs> show. But, but, I'm, but I'm reading off a script, so I kind of can still sound smart. Oh, that's good. Um, I don't know. Stuff that I've watched that I've enjoyed, um, that I was surprised that I enjoyed. I checked out, I mean, this is from quite a few months ago, 
But when Middle Ditch and Schwartz came out on Netflix, oh yeah, the like, uh, the improv, the improv yeah. thing, because I was like, I've never, I'd never really seen improv get filmed. Mm. I know that there was Ask Cat and things like that from UCB, but I had never seen those. But I'd always had the, th- you know, the thought in my mind. I go, surely this could work sometimes. Like when you see good improv, you yeah. go, surely this can work. And this was genuinely just really fun. And they, mm. you know, like we like if you. I mean, if, those guys are amazing. Yeah, those oh, guys yeah. are amazing. I mean, if you know improv, you know that like that there are tricks in what they're doing. That it's like you know that that does just induce laughter and it makes it kind of easier as mm. a, as, as an improv guy. Um, but I just thought it's like it's. It was genuinely really fun, and you go, oh, I wish, actually, I wish there was more of these, and they'd be super cheap to make. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and they could, you know, and so they could they you know, pay they for could, themselves. You yeah, audience. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I thought, I thought that was just I, easy fun. I also watched the series recently, Truth Seekers, on Amazon Prime. You seen this? Oh, oh, no, Nick Frost. About that. Nick yeah. Frost, Simon about, Pegg. Yeah. I actually really, really liked it. Huh. Yeah. Um, not too scary for me, so that was good. <laughs> okay, great. It's um, unusual. But, uh, yeah, I, had, I, I di- hadn't heard anything about it. I had absolutely no expectations. You just saw the thing and you yeah, went, yeah. cool. And I, I, I liked its vibe a lot. Mm. I, 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 I laughed. I liked Nick Frost a great deal. It was good. So last was good. thing that I've got. Go on, go on. Uh, my son had watched through it and then we were getting little bits and pieces of it and then we were like, oh, shit, this actually seems quite good. Have you, any of you guys seen Steven Universe? No, I know Levens loves uh, Andrew Levens loves. Yeah, Steven, Steven Universe yeah. is really good. Yeah, um, it's just like there's there's so much to it, and there's there's so many. I mean, they're all little short episodes, but um, yeah, we're we're watching through it, and we kind of we've seen the movie a bunch of times because I, I just want to watch it mm. a bunch. But but yeah, uh, Steven Universe I, is. Re- I love how kids stuff is good. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of stuff. Imagine like, raising kids in an era oh my where God. kids stuff was bad. Your dad's uncle yeah. gives you a weird take. Or <laughs> <laughs> this is the best show I've ever seen. <laughs> it's all episodes of Scooby Doo where they're like, "Where's the clue?" And it's like it's under the one rock that's a different color to all the other rocks because that's the only thing that's going to move. And you see, uh, the ghost was a hologram, was it? Okay, good. That scene. Yep. All right. Oh, carnival liner. Yep. All right. Great. Yeah, uh, things were let's, not. As let's good. not lie to ourselves. A lot of Kids' content is still bad. Oh, yeah, like day. my yeah. son watches like Beyblades and it's just people screaming at each other and f- spinning tops. <laughs> like it's just it's ba- crazy. Ba- Beyblades. Beyblades. Yeah. Bay babes. We actually have some Beyblades at home and actually yeah. that's much more fun. It's it definitely just, is. just doing it. It's literally just um, spinning tops crashing yeah. into each other. Yeah, I'm really good at it. Because <laughs> I'm stronger. Yeah, so, you know, exactly. Yeah, you, you get more of a rip to it. <laughs> Yours gets more than you can just watch their smash to pieces. And yeah. it's, really, it's really satisfying. Yeah, so I've been doing some Beyblades. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wish you battled you with me sometime. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, see who the real strong man is. Yeah. Uh. Is there a web series in this? Yeah, there might just be. Yeah. But no, there is also, like, I'm trying to think of some other. Yeah, he does watch other kids' shows, and I'm like, this is actually all right. Mm. Like, Voltron is incredible. I don't know if you've seen Voltron. It, no, like, I'm totally not. works as, like, on every level, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, is that a cl- that's a classic show. No, this is, they redid it on oh. Netflix, and yeah. the new one's good. New one's really good. It's the, by the people who did the Last Airbender, um, the Avatar, oh, which is yeah, also, which right. I also recently wow. watched, which is incredible. But yeah, awesome. yeah, I've heard good things about mm. Airbender that I would like to get oh. into, and maybe Voltron one day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the dream. If you play yeah. cards right, maybe you can watch Voltron too. Well. <laughs> is, it, is, yeah. an, is another recommendation <laughs> for a kids thing? There's a book called The Little uh, Yellow Digger. It's really, really good. Let's have a look. You I won't be able to find books. it anywhere because I found it in an op shop. Oh. And it's, it's from <laughs> New Zealand. But somebody made the observation that the word bigger and digger rhyme and they turned it into a really, really good book. <laughs> it's well, it's maybe, just, look, maybe this is going to go it's print the, again. Just I'm going to buy this. Concerned. I found it. I'm going to buy it. It's the perfect children's book. Really? Huh. The little kids. What's it yeah. called again? The, the little, little yellow, yellow digger. digger. The little yellow, little yellow digger. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm going to be able to read this. I think there might be some sequel books to this as well. He does really? all sorts of adventures. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like 15 results for like, or well, maybe oh, it's only maybe four it's or five. Book. Yeah. Is, is this it? This isn't it? The... Oh, no, that is it. Yeah, yeah. sorry. I apologize. By Betty Gilder. Yeah, Dan, just you said Dan. he, and I thought, well, then that's... Yeah, well, now there's going to be a run on the Little Yellow Digger franchise. Yeah, yeah not going to be able to get it. Not going <laughs> to be able to get it. They will make a movie about it. <laughs> um, I'll this... hate it. Jason Statham will be the Little Yellow Digger. <laughs> this is... Oh, I'm the Little <laughs> Digger. <laughs> you know, oh, you think... him with a... You think you're littler than me? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm a bigger digger. <laughs> um, this, uh, you, you read... Um... Harry McClary? Oh, yeah, yeah, many yeah. times, yeah. So I'm down at Donaldson's Dairy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? 
<laughs> I just it's just an observation that I I, I hadn't realized, right? Um, Donaldson's Dairy. You think that that's a you probably you probably you you lot you probably think that's a place where you milk cows. Go on. Well, but in <laughs> but in, in where New, is this going? Alistair? In New Zealand, yes. a dairy is what they call a corner shop. Oh. And so Donaldson's there. I think is that um, a New Zealand book? I didn't know that. Yeah, I think Julia Donaldson is a, a is a, is a Wait, Kiwi woman. She's not. That's not Julia Donaldson. Is no, she? No, 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 not Julia Donaldson. Yeah. The, the other Lindley woman. Dodd. Lindley Dodd. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Lindley Dodd. <laughs> Very um, good. Well, now yeah. I'm going to have to go and rethink a whole lot of things. Now, yeah, yeah, because now, you, you know, you're going to look at these through a very different lens. It makes lens. a lot of sense because there are zero, yeah, it's just Wait like, a minute, this is actually a corner <laughs> shop of some kind. It's Jim Statham. It's always Statham. It's just the voice of Harry McClary. <laughs> and the body of Harry McClary. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, could they get an actor with more hair? They just made a rod for their own back. <laughs> really I mean, yeah, you could picture like what was that? That cat, something McClaw, Scarface, Scarface Claw, Scarface Claw. Yeah. Claw you know, you, I mean, that you could get a big actor, like a, like actually a big actor, like The Rock, eh? like The Rock, like, need someone scary. Scarface Claw, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm just saying it could be an action movie. <laughs> I agree. Very action movie. Definitely could. My boys are very scared of Duff, Scarface Claw. Oh, we yeah. re- re- them scared in my family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How old are your kids? Uh, four. Okay. Cool. And every yeah, time yeah. you close the book, you're like, and remember, boys, he is real. <laughs> and he will find you. So yeah. Cats, that's a real stay animal. Alert. It's yeah. a very real animal. We have animal. one in our house. <laughs> anyway, good night. <laughs> we don't why know you, what room Why do you keep having nightmares? What's <laughs> with you? <laughs> Get over it. All right. Uh, anyway, again, guys, thank you so much for, for swinging on by. Thank you coming out so this much. Way. Uh, best of luck on all your endeavours. And, of course, there's you've also Two in the Think Tank, which is a podcast that you do also. A regular podcast, what, which is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Yeah. What up? What are you up to in terms of episode numbers? Episode 272. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah it's getting close. <laughs> yeah. We're almost at episode 300, which is where we have to come up with 300 sketch ideas. Are you going to do it? You don't it? have to, though. <laughs> yeah, we don't <laughs> have to. Thing. You don't no, have to. There's, a cr- it's, there's an inevitability to it. Like, much there like isn't. The, there's <laughs> much, <laughs> and, much there like, isn't. Much like death itself. It will come for us, and I, I feel there's no point. It feels like it's the only important thing we do. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, it's just like yeah. to have a challenge that is gonna mm. that is gonna hurt our minds, and maybe yeah. our bodies. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know, I feel like the last one you were more prepared going into it, though. A little bit, a bit yeah. more a bit. efficient. Yeah. We had a few more veggie sausages to yeah. eat cold. Yeah, mm. uh, mashed and... potato. I don't know. I just can't remember if we had. Mashed oh potato. man, we had we had a couple of blocks of cheese so that we could carve them into some. Wine That's goblet. right. That's right. That's and right. James, yeah. you came I was in the right end. at the end with bananas and beer, I and did. that really was nice. absolutely what got us over the yeah. line. Very welcome. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you. It was a joy to watch. I'm so glad I could be there. Oh. Yeah. Wow, that is, <laughs> and, that, and that, James, uh, James, and so you were also there. I was also there. In the struggle bit where I couldn't come up with a sketch <laughs> idea based on the words that I said, upside down helicopter or inverse <laughs> helicopter. <laughs> And Andy went to the bathroom and I and I realized, oh, there is no partnership. <laughs> it's just Andy. And I'm there watching him. <laughs> and I went, uh, reverse helicopter. Um, maybe maybe something that digs in the ground. <laughs> but we had to get to 200 ideas, so we wrote it down. Yeah. Wrote it down. <laughs> well, thank you for being there and witnessing it. You're very welcome. Me. I appreciate it. So, Andy, um, I hope you're looking forward to coming up with 300. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Anyway, yeah, thanks again, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, see you next Toodles. time. Hopefully. Bye. Thanks. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. James, it's time for letters. The boys have gone. They're Presumably gone. Presumably they fell into a black hole or something. Oh, no. I hope they're all right. Some magic, the watch. Do you, think you know they're... we talked about that? Yeah, we did talk about Probably that. Probably fell into a magic black hole. Do you think they're okay? No, nah, I think they're dead. Oh, well. Anyway, here's letters. The classic one was letters, oh, letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only Right now, we're gonna do letters. Hello, hello, and welcome to the letter segment of hello. the show. Where we, uh, if you do want to send a letter to the show, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter. You can also shoot through a voicemail to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com if you keep it brief, 30 seconds, or just send through a regular email. Regular letter, yeah. Got a whole we're bunch experimenting of stuff going on. With, with some audio stuff. Uh, what do you want to do first? Do you want to do a tweet first? I'll do, yeah, do a tweet first. Okay, cool. We've got this from Sean who says, Hi from Ireland. Just wondering, are you concerned about the lack of a main villain for Spider Man 3? Rumors are all over the place for confirmed Doc Ock, 
Goblin, Electro, to, to rumours such as Craven the Scorpion, Spider Slayer, so it's hard to pinpoint who is the main. Ah. What do you think about that? I think there will ultimately be a mastermind behind whatever A multiverse is going monster on. man? Multiverse monster man, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. Could be a Scarlet Witch. I don't no, think it will no, be. I don't think it is. Yeah. Maybe a Nightmare or a Dormammu, one of those. Or a Mephisto. Or a Mephisto, yeah. That's uh, true. He's doing some Spider-Man stuff, isn't he? Yeah. Mm. Or it could be Larry. Could be Larry the Cable oh, Guy. Yeah. yeah. Wait, did we talk about La- we talked about Larry on the WandaVision video. <laughs> was it Larry? It was Larry. Larry the Aerospace Engineer. Oh, yeah. yeah okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, well, I'm saying it's Larry. Okay, it's Larry. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm happy with that. Yeah. And for more context, you're going to have to watch that video. Everyone is talking about how, the, uh, how epic it's going to be, aren't they? Hmm. Like Tom Holland is like, it's the biggest movie I've ever seen. I've been in some pretty big, pretty, pretty big blockbusters in my day, in my twenty-two years. I was in the Mind Snake. <laughs> is that out yet? I had a Mind Snake coming out of my head. <laughs> I like what he's doing. Sorry, me bonds. <laughs> you know, mind Snake coming out of his bonds. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Are you worried about villain overload though? No, I yeah. don't think. I think a l- someone will be like a few seconds. I'd imagine. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you know, they might surprise us, but I. Would be uh, my feeling is that there won't be just an enormous team up a la end game of everybody who's ever yeah. been in one action sequence. I think it might be a case of tumbling through reality, and yes, we wait. get in de- like we get the the Raimi villains all in one scene yes. briefly, and then through, and then maybe may, maybe 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 well, there's a, like the because it's pretty sure that Alfred Molina's in it. So maybe there's like with the J.K. Simmons, there's like a version of him in the MCU. Or yeah, whatever. for sure, and yeah. you know maybe a couple of them. We get, kiss, you know, the yeah. best of them and they kiss. And then a the yeah. couple of, you know, they, we get a couple of drips and drabs of all of them at the end and we get a few. But I, I'm, my feeling will be that there'll be one guy behind it all and then Tom Holland, Spider Man will punch him. Mm, or shoot him. Yeah, with a, with a gun. With a gun. Yeah, with nice. a regular gun. Nice. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, do you want to do another tweet before we do the, um, the Gmails? You should, yes. Please. Good, good. It's from JJ Script says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. With the announcement of the Fantastic Four life story, which I did not know. This is how I found out about this. This is uh, this is the, the Fantastic comic Four comic series in the style of Spider Man life yeah. story, in which their lives will they will age as normal throughout the sixties through the modern yes. era. Yeah, they've done it with uh, Spider Man. They've done it with Captain America. They did it with probably someone else. Uh, uh, us, our lives. Uh, so, oh my goodness! Who would you enjoy seeing getting that treatment now that it seems to be more of a one time thing? Uh, perhaps a Nick Fury run where each issue has the iconic stories told as parodies of spy movies in that era. Oh, interesting. That would be a good yeah. character because he starts as like initially as a World War Two hero. Yeah. And then he's kind of, they don't, he stays about the same age, but he he does involve himself with conflicts over the. Yeah, I would decades. like to see Punisher life story. Maybe that's, yeah, right. maybe that's, uh, maybe the series itself is too poignant for yeah. the Punisher maybe. No, but I again, think that's a perfect like place he, for that. He's a character, but I mean. I guess the the issue being that he kind of exists in a weird limbo in which his origin is still Vietnam. Yes. And so he has sort of aged normally yeah. in the Marvel Universe. It's 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 come and gone whether he's aged yeah. normally or not. So now he should be in his 70s. 60 or 70s, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. If he, if, I think he lied about his age to get into Vietnam. So okay, he's, when he so was man, four. Yeah, when he was four. Just a brick of a baby. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, maybe. Um, I like that idea, though. Yeah, what about... What about a Wolverine where he, where everyone's getting older? We've seen Iron Man, haven't we, in like... Because doesn't Captain America go to Vietnam to fight for the Vietnamese and Iron Man is fighting for... Am I thinking of... Might be thinking of the Spider-Man. That Spider-Man 10 years one. Ah, uh, okay, right, 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 right. a different thing, yeah. Uh, what about... Have we... they done Daredevil? No, mm. no. He's got some iconic story. He's yeah. got enough good storylines where you could do one every ten yeah, years, nice. isn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good though that they are doing Fantastic mm. Four. So yeah, I will for give sure. that a read. Yeah. But should we do some audio things or a regular Gmail? Oh, let's do some audio things. I've, I'll forward you some. Regular, I've got them ready to go. So one one is has been screened by me already. That's right. And one is going to be a surprise. So this and is, I think it's going to be a very. You'll good need surprise. your headphones for this, Mason. Oh yeah. If we're going to make this happen. Okay. You got to jack in. Okay. Yeah. Oh no, he's trying to put the he's trying to connect, but there's a big skull and crossbones on the screen. No, my headphones are just tangled up. Okay. This is just like the movie Hackers. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You should get some cordless headphones. But then again, if you did, we couldn't couldn't do this. You'd have to get a wireless desk. Oh, I don't want that, Mason. I don't want to do any of that. Can you get wireless big? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. For I studio got, work? I've got, yeah, I've got, oh. well, any wireless can connect to my phone, I oh. think, can connect to this road system that we have. Wow, Venom laptops can do anything. Mm, though I am yeah. due for a new one. <laughs> Did you know that? Yeah. We're in. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. From Grant. Uh, people might remember last week Grant wrote in about, he wrote a, um, a review where he had to lie to Brian Michael Bendis uh, to, to in order to pretend he knew who he was and he used information we had told him. So good. this is a follow-up to that. A little white lie. There we go. Is that a good summary? Yeah, but we didn't know why. We didn't know what the lie was. But now we're going to find out. Here we yeah. go. Hey, James and Meso, this is Grant from Oregon. Following up from last week on Lion Michael Bendis. I was hired at a comic book shop for my Magic the Gathering knowledge more than my extremely minimal comics knowledge. Nice. One day my boss looked at me and whispered, Do you see that bald guy? I panicked and assumed he was a shoplifter that I hadn't noticed, but then my boss said, That's Brian Michael Bendis. Clearly expecting me to be impressed. I knew nothing about him except from hearing his name on your show, so I said, No way! Secret War. And that was apparently <laughs> enough to convince him I had enough comic book cred not to fire me. So thanks again for all of the vague knowledge you provide. <laughs> Happy to do it. That's, That's all great. you need. That's all you need is you just need... We're, we're good at providing enough yeah. surface level knowledge. I'm, I'm you know? looking at pictures of Brian Michael Bendis, and I don't think... I know his face well enough or I could go, that's definitely Brian Michael Bendis. Yeah. He's, he just looks like a Michael Chiklis kind of looking dude. You know I reckon I, mean? I might be like Mark Wade. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Interesting. Thank you. Uh, that that was very informative. And I like how like in a store like that, it's like he was, there's specific knowledges that you're kind of hired for. Yeah, yeah. But also they expect you to know everything, which is also unfair, I feel. Don't you exactly. Think? Especially considering at most comic book stores, you just have to stand behind the counter and not react to anything. You know? <laughs> that's right. Oh, and not have favorite. any enthusiasm for anything. Oh, could, I mean, I can understand that as well because people are just coming to pick a fight about yeah, different yeah. comic runs. I also like to think that Brian Michael Bendis, like why he, why he was there, uh, I, I like to think that he was just sort of at a booth like signing and there was an enormous oh, sign over his head that said, Brian Michael Bendis, Secret Wars. <laughs> you know from Secret Wars. <laughs> Secret Wars. Do you think it's okay to go in if you're a book writer or a comic creator, like a, like a Levins who signs his book? Mm-hmm. Do you think it's okay to go in and sign all your books? What, without asking? Yeah. Yeah, because what it's you fun, want, right? you want to start a fight with whoever's working. I mean, <laughs> they'd have to know who you are, right? Yes. You couldn't just yeah, uh, yes. do it. Uh-huh. You'd have to sign your own books. Yeah, d- yeah yes. That's, that's what I'm saying. I think it's probably okay, Okay, yes. cool. Yeah. Yeah, cool. All right, here we go. Unless this- they were like, we hear that if you – you're at, this will actually be a detriment to the value of the book. We're going to have to lower the price if you sign this. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, this is from Matt. This is an unscreened uh, yeah, call. Uh, and if you'd like to read the uh, the subject line. Oh, I didn't read the subject line. It is, let me know if you guys want a high quality version. No, the subject line. Oh, Weekly Planet jazzy theme song. I apologize. Right? Here we go. What's it going to sound like? Jack Johnson. I was going to say, it's got a Jack Johnson, Xavier Wright kind of vibe. That's exactly right. A Pete Murray, if you will. A Pete Murray, (laughs) very much a Pete Murray. It's like like we were by the fireside. Loved it. And he's like, he's there, he's trying to impress some girls and he's like, hey, you want to hear the theme tune to a podcast Oh, whose guitar is this? Who's, what, you want me to play? Don't mind (laughs) if I, I mean, um, mean, it's a bit embarrassing. I guess I'll just try to bring, oh, yeah, no, that's, I'll just tune it up a little bit, but that's sounding (laughs) pretty good. Let's just, uh. Haven't done this in a while, but uh, a bit rusty. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Don't, don't bloody blame nice. me. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um. Cool. That was great. I loved it. Me too. Yeah. Unscreened, you get pleasant surprises. We haven't <laughs> had any unpleasant surprises yet. Well, because we've only done two. Yeah, but so. they're coming. Oh, they really are. Hello, dog. Yeah. Hey, Here we go. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm just looking at a bunch of reactions to WandaVision, which we're getting sent. Also, well, I'm going to while you people do are this, loving it. I'm going to read out some emails. Please do. Yeah. Uh, okay, here's a few. Uh, this one is from Tucker. Great name. Hello. James, help me expose a weekly wacker to do in Alaska. Got him. Uh, hey there, James and Meso. Been listening to your podcast for nearly six years and have been a great source of entertainment for me during various everyday routines. Uh, at my last job, I worked at a distributorship that had offices in several states in the northwest of the U.S., including Alaska. I worked in the Seattle office, and one day I was instant messaging one of the workers in the Alaska office who I'd never actually met in person. We're just joking around when all of a sudden my coworker casually dropped the phrase, well, as a father. Oh, my goodness. Uh, sure, this is a common enough expression, but it was so specific that it gave me pause, and I truly felt it was too much of a coincidence. 
I hesitated for just a moment, decided to go out on a limb and say, wait a minute, as a father, are you a fellow weekly wacker to do? Oh my God, that's a big swing. That's a you big could have swing. said, like, do this in the Weekly Planet, which sounds less insane. Yeah. To which he promptly responded, oh my God, yes, I love the Weekly Planet. <laughs> so there you go. Love uh, it. I just thought you guys might like to hear how you guys have uh, listeners all over the world and that James's famous saying could actually serve as a password for discreetly discovering fellow weekly wacker to do's out in the wilderness. Or really obnoxious dads. That's exactly that's right. Thanks for. very much, Tucker. Thank you, Tucker. Can I be the official Tucker of the podcast? Yes. Absolutely, you can. Uh, that's terrific. It's exciting. Yeah, it's a real, it's a real uh, friend of Dorothy kind of... Uh, what does that mean? What's expression. that expression? Explain it to me. I'll explain it off there. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's fun. I like it a lot. <laughs> me too. Excellent. Uh, and this is a last email from Sam Robson. Yep. Uh, what do you wish you knew at 21? Hey there, you oh, silly God. sausages. I'm turning 21 on February the 9th and was wondering what you two wish you knew earlier. Are there any books you'd wish you'd read before crossing the line into adulthood? Ooh. Can I be the official jalapeno man of the pod? Don't know what that means, but yes. Yeah, definitely can. Yeah. Must like them. They're good, aren't they? Um, for me, it's with limitations. You can do anything, really. Well, you don't have. To- I don't mean you can do any. Obviously, right, there yeah, are, yeah. but like there are no real. Like everything's rules are arbitrary. Sure. There's yeah. actually quite a bit of flexibility in things. Yeah. There's no one way to do anything. You do. I think my my number one thing would be. You don't have to have everything figured out by 21. So, or, e- I, or ever. Or ever, really, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we're 21 to 25. That's right. Potentially a different right, age. We age still don't have everything yeah. figured out. That's so. absolutely right. So, yeah. yeah, I guess also that there's no, like, peak point of happiness. Every, it's like I disagree. I'm at 100% happiness up, all Mason. the time. <laughs> Well, I got some very rude emails that I've been hiding from you, so if you, if you, want, you want me to bring you down a bit. No, if anything, it'll bring me to 110% happiness. <laughs> no, but like it's peaks and troughs, you know what I mean? Mm. And it could be daily or it can be over a period of time and whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. But no, I like that about you not you, you don't figure it out, mm. really. And also if you do figure it out, then things change. And if you do figure it out, email us and let us know. Tell us what it is. we'd like to know. We're desperate to know. We'd love to know. Yeah. yeah. Also, most people don't know what they're doing. You know how you think that, like, adults have it figured out when you're yeah, a kid? Yeah, that's, that's a good one, actually, yeah. And uh, it's kind of chaos. It's kind of fucking all over the shop, isn't <laughs> true, it? yeah. Which is a bit um, upsetting, but also... Freeing. It's out of your hands, so yeah, what do you do? Right. Yeah, what do you do? Mm. Right. Yeah, I guess you just start breaking windows. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. That's Was that it? That's the, whole, <laughs> that's the whole show, everybody. Thanks, everybody, so much for... Um, <laughs> Listening and uh, telling your friends and lying to your friends and enemies about listening to the show and Spotting a subscribing in and, the wild. And, uh, and and breaking windows in the name of the podcast, maybe graffitiing our logo on like a like oh a goodness. like a municipal building or yeah, something. Yeah, but it's obviously they've approved it. You know what I mean? I mean, it's better. One thing I would tell people, you know, that are turning twenty one, it's it's easier to you know beg for forgiveness than ask for permission. So true. To spray our logo on a municipal building, I would kind of yeah. love that actually. Pretty don't go to jail for it. You don't do it. But uh, yeah. I just say I would love it. <laughs> no, that's too. Uh, don't do it. But also Genuinely. leave a nice review. Don't do that. Leave a nice review. I, I do. I got, there. I got one here from Pickle Nick who says uh, podcast completely dedicated to. Oh, uh, James, do you remember when you sent in a pickle, Rick? Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh my uh, god. Yeah. It's, I Blow my that's, mind. That's, <laughs> Pickle Rick. <laughs> podcast completely dedicated to the latest Paul Hogan so news. So funny. Uh, so my podcast is completely dedicated to the latest Paul Hogan news. My grandfather recently passed away, boo. And in his will it states that I must give this podcast a five-star review to receive my inheritance. Mm, I suspect your, your grandfather was a, was a great listener of the show. I agree. Yeah. That's right. Now I've done my part. All that is left is to wait to receive my sweet corn of Coblin glider. Did I mention uh, that my grandfather was the, was the wicked corn of Coblin? Well, he was. Spoiler, corn of Coblin. And he returned in phase six. Wow, a lot of revelations. You could have something like that, incredible true story. Mm-hmm. Or as Eddie has just written in, uh, best show, five stars, just started listening and now I, can, uh, now I can't stop, can't get enough. Is it bad that my conscience now has an Australian accent? I also just want to mention, you know that the delightful Paul Hogan movie or whatever? The something Mr. Dundee or whatever it is. I watched it. What did you think? It's actually all right. Wow. I mean, it's, look, go into it thinking it's going to be the you've worst thing you've ever full seen. you dad. It was really like... Inoffensive, and there's a bit of like, I can't believe Paul Hogan's getting cancelled again, and all that kind of. There's a bunch <laughs> of that shit, you know what I mean? Okay. But it's like completely inoffensive, like boomer comedy. Like yeah. if you loved the Gong Show that he came to 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 to, to life in in the seventies in Australia. Okay. Then this is like right up your alley. Wow. And he's also he pokes fun at himself quite a bit. Huh. So again, it's not great, but it was like. All right. I am fascinated. But tell me off it's air. It's got some celebrity cameos that you wouldn't expect as well. Oh. Mm. Wee Man? 
No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great guess. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> uh, I would, if you tell me off air, I'd be fascinated to know the thought process that led you to a path of watching this movie. Um, I think it was I was away. Uh-huh. And I could only stream certain things from my phone to the Chromecast TV. Okay. And I think one of them was Stan, the Stan app. Uh, and that I has just Mr. went, Dundee, right. whatever. Okay, wow. And again, you're going to watch it and you're going to be like, why did you say that? <laughs> yes. I feel this like, is one of your famous <laughs> tricks to get me to watch the very it's fabulous really Mr. Not. Dundee or whatever It's it really is. not. I don't expect Are you it. secretly being sponsored by the very fantabulous Mr. Dundee? I wish, Mason. Yeah. I take the many dollars that he definitely has. Yeah. There is a, there, okay, there's a couple of good jokes, like genuinely. Well, let's spoil them here. No, I, no, I am because you're never going to watch it. Yeah. But one of them where they talk about they want to make a new Crocodile Dundee and they're like, what if we make, like in this third one, he goes to Los Angeles and he's like, we made that movie. It's pretty good. And I'm like, yeah, because it was bad and nobody remembers it or whatever. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty funny. It's pretty good. a bit of a ribbing. Yeah. So that's the best joke. Oh, okay, So cool. just work back from there. Great. Yeah. Terrific. Again, it's totally – it is what it is. Yeah. Anyway, what's that? What's next? What are you doing? Oh, uh, folks, thanks for those nice reviews. Uh, if you want to get in contact with us, mm. if you want to leave uh, uh, um, an email or just get in contact with us in any other way or leave an audio mm-hmm, message, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, put it directly in their email and send it to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. You can also right. go to weeklyplanetpod at Facebook and Twitter and Bandcamp. That's right. You can go to planetbroadcasting.com. You can uh, look at all the podcasts on the Planet Broadcasting Network. You can also sign up to the uh, newsletter from the great Rob Collings. He's at Raw Collings on Twitter. He's also at The Weekly Planet on Twitter. So I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter and on Instagram. I'm Nick Maso, N-I-C-K-M-A-S-E-A-U. James, you're Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. I certainly am. I certainly am. Uh, why don't you also join up the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group? Mm-hmm, They're mm-hmm. talking about all sorts of stuff. We're having great conversations about pop culture and all kinds of things. There's big WandaVision spoiler threads you can get in there. You can submit your theories for WandaVision, all kinds of – all the hot stuff, James. That's right. Well, you'd think you'd be like, well, this Facebook group, it's probably behind on all the hot stuff. Well, it's not. No, it's, it's way ahead of the curve. What are you talking about? On all the hot stuff. Who said that? Who's been saying that? Who's been saying that? I said it, but then I checked it. Okay, good. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. And it's up to date. Yeah, it's cool. Way up to date. Mm. Um, 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 if you would like to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Chuck in a buck. You can also go to the Amazon affiliate link in our episode description. You click through, buy some stuff on Amazon. That's right. You can also go to bigsandwich.co. Sign up for mm-hmm. $9, nine US dollar dues a month. Got some, uh, I've actually got, uh, so last week we did Darth Vader in the Ghost Prison for our comic book club. That's right. And this week we're going, we've got a time crapsule episode where we pick a year in pop culture and then go through it. And it's our 1962 episode, which was the year that James Bond started, oh. along with Spider Man, along with. Breast implants, I think, we talked about also, which were, <laughs> which kicked off that year, putting just poison into people's bodies. What you know what year? I mean? And just rattling around in there. <laughs> uh, so there you go. So that's out along with there's a huge back catalogue of movie commentaries and other bonus podcasts. All sorts of stuff. Get in there. It's, it's right. a bargain. It's, it's, it's an increasing bargain. Yeah, every, it really every, is. Uh, every, yeah. every, every I mean, week. If you like us. If not, it's oh, Such insane. a waste of money. Yeah. Insane waste of money. And then you, then can we buy, gotta, you can buy an actual big sandwich for we that. We can. And then we got to record another movie commentary for... Uh, for the next week, which I haven't actually done yet, so we got to think of something. To, yeah, we'd have to think. We will think of something, but yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, let's do it. Let's yeah, do nice. it. All right. Um, t-shirts on tpublic.com. That's right. Search for the Weekly Planet. We got regular Weekly Planet. We got bootleg Weekly Planet. We got uh, Weekly Planet posters. Weekly Planet. All sorts of uh, t-shirts. Love them. All sorts of Weekly Planets. That's right. Uh, thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rackham for all the musical themes. Thank you to that gentleman. Uh, whose name I cannot recall off the top of my head. Oh, it's Matt. Who provided that jazzy theme. It was Matt. It was Matt, our wasn't it? jazzy. Oh, it was Jack Johnson. It was Jack Johnson, it was Jack and Johnson. Xavier Rudd, and Pete, Pete Murray. Murray. Pete Murray on bass there. Oh, who <laughs> left this bass here? I'm a bit rusty on the bass normally. I was Matt Rosenberg. Normally I play the 12-string guitar, but... Mm, yeah, know. but I'll do what I can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Make a little magic here tonight, That's he exactly. said. Oh, yeah. the John Butler trio has shown up. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. I think it's just John <laughs> Butler <laughs> <now. laughs> yeah, That's you know? right. But we want a 19-minute banjo solo, don't we? <laughs> what happened to him? He's still around. Remember the it? joke we used to do more like John has a butler because he's rich? Yeah. But he's in the Australian music industry, so it's probably not rich. Probably not rich anymore. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Um, uh, that's, John that, that's... Butler Net Worth. They're never accurate. <laughs> Yours says you're worth $10 million or something. Mm, does it? Uh, um, he's worth $12 million. Wow. That's, that's, prob- that's probably accurate, though. Yeah, probably. No, I'm worth $900,000. Oh, that's right. That's what it was. Is that Australian or US? I'll check my bank account. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Mr. Bank Manager. <laughs> there should be a lot more money in this. I don't know. What are you? Are you stealing from me? I'm Mr. Sunday Movies. That's who I am. Yeah. All right, we'll see you next week for... Different thing. Different thing. Don't yeah, it? maybe don't. another special guest next week. We'll try and, yeah, we we'll might try actually, and try yeah. work on that. Got another yeah. one coming up uh, yeah. for an exciting show that's starting. 
All right, we'll see you guys next time. Grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. I'm going to mute it this time. Nice. So we don't say anything rude. Bum. Big bums. <laughs> Big round bums. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. James, what are you done? We're cancelled. <laughs> this podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.